the college football experience conference championship week at FCS playoff preview episode on the sports gambling podcast network is brought to you by bet rivers. Claim your risk free bet up to $500 over at sports gambling podcast.com slash bet rivers at sports gambling podcast.com slash bet rivers. We're also brought to you by hall of fame bets, the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props and game lines. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com. Use that promo code SGPN to get 50% off your first month and start making smarter bets today, people. And remember, as always, to let it ride. Hey, everybody. Joe Theismann here. You're listening to SGPN. So do this let it ride. Championship preview and picks along with the FCS college football playoffs. Oh, it's this weekend's gonna be glorious. You sprinkle that in with some huge college basketball matchups. Oh, UConn at Kansas, uh, and just some fire Gonzaga, USC, all this great shit. You blend all of it together, and you got you got uh, rocket fuel. All right, I'm just gonna call it rocket fuel. Let's go, uh, folks. If you're wondering who the hell you're listening to, my name is Kobe Swinging Database Dan, aka Pick Dundee. That's not a pick. This is a pick. He was raised in the land down under, where a man thinks on his feet, speaks with his fists, and lives by his wits. When Dundee happened, he was a superstar. I'm probably drinking too much and celebrating too much and not sleeping. Uh, would have killed a normal man, but uh, no, that's gone. The medical advice I got from that was, was like being hit by lightning. Pretend it never happened and get on with your life. Mm. What a time to be alive. Oh, yeah. We got Coach Hirons, Coach Byrons. I am joined by my co-host. Give it up for former, former JMU Duke defensive back, the burrito eating, side lad kiss stealing, wheeling and dealing, Patty C in the place to be. Hi. Bring that mic closer to you. Why didn't I hear you there, huh? I don't know. I gotta scream a little louder. Yeah. My horse, uh, my voice is hoarse from a uh, hell of a horse? college. You my horse, uh, yeah, my horse are horse. Well, we got something going great in the world. We're gonna talk about it in a second, but first, we're also joined by third man in the booth, the DFS God himself. Yes, we will have a DFS episode out. Give it up for the rooftop IPA drinking, home brew making, tobacco road living, the free like giving. Former, former Hunter Basketball League MVP, giving up for NC Nick in the place to be. There we go. What's up, guys? Buzzwords. Yeah, buddy. We just oh. talked two days ago. I feel like there's a shit ton of more new news. Well, you know, the world's been chaos. It's been horrible with, uh, you know, conference realignment and all this stuff. They say, Colby, be up, beat. I can't. Can't. <laughs> Impossible. Who's that? <laughs> the people out there in the universe, <laughs> but occasionally the planet gets it right. Now this I'm dying to hear. How did the planet get it right? Colby? Well, sometimes, sometimes Colby, for, for Colby to say anything's right in November of the college football season is very, very rare. Is very rare. Oh. <laughs> the outrage. Oh, he is back, baby. You can't keep a good scumbag down. All right. <laughs> Bobby Petrino takes his fifth job in the past 12 months. 
<laughs> How could they do that at an institute of higher learning? <laughs> <laughs> the Arkansas Razorbacks and Sam Pulled Pork Pittman bring it home. One of the greatest, greatest college football personalities of all time. <laughs> Where are your Bobby, morals? Bobby Petrino is back. It really is three in the last 12 months, right? Three different. No, days. he Five? was at Missouri State in November. Okay, yeah, Missouri State. That's he, true. So he's. He then takes the UNLV job in December. Yeah. He then jumps over to A uh, and M, and so is a four, four. right? Four. four. Okay. And Still now he's out with the Arkansas Razorbacks. He's home. Oh, watch out, volleyball players! <laughs> the world is beautiful. Uh, make sure you understand what that promotion really means, volleyball players. Um. <laughs> anyway, uh, guys, they, they, they might not be willing to be you know slumming with the OC. That's right. That's true. <laughs> Doesn't have sounds a lot better when you're the head honcho. <laughs> <That's right>. Hot <laughs> dog. Are you really the head honcho of Arkansas football? <laughs> Let me get well, on that the offensive side, side of the ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you I'm see a that, play caller, babe. But sweetheart, you see that kick-ass motorcycle out there? <laughs> That's right. I'll let you wear my neck brace. <laughs> Bobby Petrino <laughs> is the last dude you would think to pull Harley game on a chick. <laughs> He's incredible. <laughs> I did stuck. call them volleyball students. Volleyball I mean, students. <laughs> if the, if the it, volleyball program is anything like the football program, it's not like they're really, you know, students. students. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, That's they're true. students of learning the anatomy of Bobby Petrino's body. Right. Right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Oh man, I can't believe that that like that the world's perfect. We're back. All right. <laughs> we're back. Well now we're just the Redskins away from being yeah. all the way back. And all basically now we need uh yeah. what's his name? Uh Art Browse to get hired. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Well that did happen, but that was yeah. short lived. That and, and actually <laughs> Hugh Jackson, who hired him, he got just fired in his second year. Right. Like they did exactly what I, I, Grambling, unrealistic. I didn't know right. Grambling's expectations were so high. How long was Hugh Jackson an NFL coach for? A couple of years. At yeah, least. but I'm saying he got two years at Grambling, but they were projected to be exactly what they were this year. Yeah. What the boy? What this guy? What were they There's thinking? There's probably some other stuff going on there. Well, I, I mean, mean, maybe it was that higher too. Maybe that's what started the wheels in motion. They're like, hold on. I mean, because that's yeah. they they forced Bryles out. So yeah, that's true. Oregon State named a new head football coach, defensive coordinator Trent Bray. He's a former Beaver himself. Not as uh, sexy as some would say, some would there's, like. There's a lot of names floating around there. I hadn't heard his yet, but. You know why I think it might make sense is because it might keep everybody there. It's a short term view. Yeah, things. but their defense has been pretty fire, and he is a former Beav himself. Hey, I, I'm not saying it's a bad hire. I don't know the guy. I'm just saying that you know, I think you have to hire the right coach, even if you lose some players, you know, right away. True. Yeah. And played played for the old uh, Euro Football League. There, there you go. Hamburg Sea Devils. Yeah, never fade a Hamburg Sea Devil. I remember <laughs> I was in a bar once, talk shit. I got punched so bad, but I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> by a fucking sea devil. Um, Sean Lewis, former, former Colorado offense coordinator and Kent state head coach landed the head coaching job at San Diego state. Oh boy. This was a home run. This was a fucking home run. That was a nice hire. Yeah, they're still, they it. still seem to be going away from their ground and pound physical style. Cause that's not really Sean Lewis's deal either. True. Well, he's an offensive coach, but at the I same time, he's he, hired them. I mean, he did, Sanders, he did play tight end at Wisconsin, so maybe he's got some grittiness to him. Yeah, uh, you got to figure maybe they can. Uh, but well, that wasn't. I'm I'm not sure exactly. I'm guessing they were super pass happy. Obviously, Shadur Sanders, I believe, led the nation in passing attempts this past year. You had to be pass year. happy this year when he was at Kent State. He would run a lot more. Okay, but when you saw when when Colorado, their offensive line was so bad, he's like, we're just gonna have to throw it every play. <laughs> <laughs> True. I'm sure primetime wasn't saying uh, let's run the roll every play too with his son at the helm. Doesn't, doesn't seem like something Dion would do. He, was a tight end too. He, he could have been more, you know, Travis Kelsey style, never block anybody in his life. At Wisconsin impossible. Yeah. That's true. yeah good point. Uh, <laughs> impossible at Wisconsin. Uh, I think it's a great hire at Wisconsin. Their wide receivers are essentially tight ends. So yeah, maybe not anymore. Maybe, yeah, he was like a left tackle. That's true. Uh, until next year when they realized they fucked up. Uh 
other hire Syracuse hired Fran Brown. I had to double check to make sure that there was actually a black guy named Fran. Uh, <laughs> and, and so for uh, they hired Georgia defensive backs coach, Fran Brown, uh, Patty C is this a home run hire? Doesn't seem like it. He's from Camden, New Jersey. He played for the Cincinnati Bengals. He's a Western Carolina catamount. Shout out to Weehawk. Yeah. I mean, George has been putting a pretty good defensive product out there for the past, what, 10 years or so, he, depending on how long. He's only been there like two or three years, though, I think. He yeah, was he, was at, he was with, he was with Chiano. Yeah. And then he was with Matt Rule at Temple and Baylor. So that's well, Northeast all, football. Yeah. All three of those coaches are pretty, pretty stellar defensively. You know, Kirby Smart. Uh, they could have got Bobby Petrino though. Greg Schiano and Matt rule. Uh, could have gotten Bobby Petrino. How, where is he? I guess Louisville is close enough to New York. Is Syracuse going to be like, this was shocking to me. I mean, look, I'm not saying maybe it'll work out, but you would have expected a little bit more on the resume. I like to hire coordinators, D- not, yeah, not, just not a DB coaches. coach. Yeah. You know, uh, Shane Beamer was a granted. He hasn't exactly won a lot. But uh, Dabo was a wide receivers coach, you know. Is Syracuse going to be in the FCS in twenty years? No. <laughs> I just wonder. Like, I don't know. I just thought they would try to go. Wow, you were really it. down on the hire. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Well, I just think you're in a critical time period. Where everyone's talking about how the FB, the you know, the Power Five could separate and not necessarily bring everybody to and. Syracuse seems to, I'm not, I mean, maybe it works out. I don't know, but I'm just saying like that certainly wasn't on when you, when you read all the hot coaching candidates list, there was no right. mention of Fran Brown. Uh, yeah. You I think we'd be mean? lying. If any of the three of us know who Fran Brown was before he was hired, you know, uh, we just don't know positional coaches at every 133 schools in the country. Yeah. Who knows? I, yeah. For me, it seems like a stretch, but it could work out. Apparently yeah. he uh, interviewed for the head coaching position at temple following the 2018 season, but it was given to Rod Carey. Um, so at least he's been in consideration for head coaching positions for a while. Yeah, now. Temple Syracuse once again, yeah, <laughs> interchangeable. I don't, I don't think either are going to make the cut if they have this, this fucking thing here. Uh, okay. So we got those. What else did we have? Houston. Uh, you see cliff Kingsbury is a finalist for the job. What? Who goes from Holgerson to Kingsbury? First off, two Mike Leach guys. Holgerson's the better coach here, guys. I think I yes. agree with that. I mean, it's not done yet. I, I'm expecting them to not actually do this, but that was one of the more puzzling ones when they said he's a finalist for the job. Wait, I'm like, what really? Did Houston expect they lose Clayton Toon, Tank Dell, among others. You see Tank Dell crushing it in, in the NFL right now. Yeah, and, and they jump up to the Big Twelve. I mean, he was right there with Texas. It wasn't like it was a bad year. I think I think they had to be real, realistic and know that this year was going to be a bit of a struggle. So yeah. I'm, I'm surprised at the timing. I mean, how many years did Holgerson have at the helm there? Well, Five? he redshirted everybody his first year there. That's why I'm saying, like, wasn't this part of a plan? <laughs> Two years ago, he went like 11 and one or something. Did, yeah, didn't that's he? true. Yeah. It's a pretty short. That's what I'm saying, and as you add in the year that he redshirted everybody. Uh, where they like his opening year where they were like four and eight or something, then that year shouldn't count if that was part of the fucking plan, right? right? And, and why hit the reset button for Kling, for for uh, Kingsbury? Yeah, it's just, I mean, we'll see if they go with Kingsbury. I, I would assume they're gonna like wisen up, but now, I would that say would though, be puzzling. You can, like, like we said with other coaches, you can just run out of steam in terms of momentum for the program and. Look, it's his third losing season of his five years coaching. Obviously, first that was year. expected. Their win total was four going into the Big Twelve or whatever, four and a half. It's like just because no one expects anything of them doesn't mean uh, the university should accept that. <laughs> That's true, but I, I just think they had to be realistic. Well, t- well, yeah. I mean, look, there are better coaches out there that I believe you can get, but Cliff Kingsbury is certainly not one of them. I right. agree. Speaking yeah. of reset buttons, though, you know who used to hit the reset button? Me. Me. Pick Dundee. Are. I would yeah. be kicking his ass in like Tecmo Bowl or Madden or something. And he, he, oh, he accidentally, his foot would accidentally slip Oops. and hit the reset I was button. like fucking eight years old. <laughs> All right. Look, last time you came out to California, 
<laughs> you get your ass whooped in Tecmo Bowl. You tried this Bernie Kosar bullshit. It ain't going to fly. With I hadn't played Tecmo Bowl in a decade at that point. <laughs> Whose fault is that? <laughs> Whose fault is that? All right. That's not as bad as my brother. My brother will do like the full on like board game swipe. Like if he's about to lose or if he just loses a monopoly, oh, if you're like a monopoly he just rips risk, the whole board. He just throws it. He'd be playing risk for like five hours on Christmas break. And then boom, as soon as he's out, he ruins it for everyone. Like, you asshole. Uh, that's pretty, that's pretty tough when you do it in, on, on manual. You know what I mean? Come on, gotta be, uh, the oldest, gotta be the oldest brother, right? No middle. middle oh, brother. really? He would. That's, yeah. that's the point. Uh, he's a board swiper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, other news, uh, Oklahoma hired Seth Latrell to be the offensive coordinator and tight ends coach. Hey, just going to go ahead and say Oklahoma's offense is going to be better than uh, It's going to be tougher. They're going to be a tougher team next year than they were this year. Oklahoma. Yeah. Does Gabriel probably. have more, uh, eligibility? He does have one more year. Oh, interesting. But I'm hearing speculation because of, uh, Jackson Arnold being a stud backup that, Dylan Gabriel might be a Mississippi State Bulldog quarterback. Really? He followed Lebby from UCF to, uh, well, I know Lebby went to Ole Miss for a year, but to essentially Norman. Hmm. That was the that was the tiebreaker there. Was Latrell pretty uh, run heavy uh, at uh, North Texas? Uh, a little, yeah, definitely more the most run heavy out of any of Mike Leach's coaches. Yeah. I would say. yeah. Um, interesting there. How about uh, lawn chair? Johnson, Max Johnson, hit the portal, lands at North Carolina. Uh, Brad Johnson's son. I was intrigued by why they would want to go for that. So Drake Mays, I guess, one hundred percent out the door. I think he's going. Pro. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But he is a lot different than Sam Howe or Drake May. Max Johnson. Max Johnson. Isn't, yeah, m- much more of a launcher. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's surprised. surprising because you saw today Grayson McCall. Uh, entered himself in the portal. He's a grad transfer. He can go wherever the hell he wants. I guess he doesn't piss teal anymore, but uh, you would think North Carolina yeah. gave him a call. Piss powder yeah. blue, maybe. Yeah, he can yeah. piss powder blue. He got that uh, fixed. He went to the doctor. Rick <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, and Mac Brown. He had obviously Colt McCoy, who is a bit of a mobile guy. So Vince Young, you know, it, Chris does- Sims was a very mobile guy, right? <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, not so much. <laughs> Uh, is does Mac Brown have a preference towards uh, mobile quarterbacks? Do you think or just no, no, not, no, not I don't think in so. particular. Yeah, it's like 50 50. I feel yeah, like I think I, I think Mac Brown could probably work his offense around Max Jones, but certainly less dynamic of a player than Howell or uh, May. Uh, Mike Gundy was named Big 12 coach of the year. There was some some people questioning why was he coach of the year over Sark? Well, because Texas is supposed to win the Big 12 every year. And right. Oklahoma State was projected to finish seventh. I, I don't right. understand why everyone has a big deal with this. But those coach of the of the conference or coach of the year awards are always jaded. Like you know, like Coach K, the greatest coach ever. Like he didn't, <laughs> win, <laughs> he didn't, he didn't win a, that award for like twenty straight years. It's like he can win a national championship, doesn't win that award. So it's always like, yeah, who's doing who's more with less? You? Yeah. yeah, but is that really the best coach? So I, I, who cares? Every now and then they'll just give it to the best coach, but I feel like you're right. It's far more rare than it should be. Yeah. Uh, Josh we, Pastor won that award over Coach K. Is Josh Pastor a better c- coach than Coach K? <laughs> no, he should never coach ever again. Uh, Real uh, quick, before we go too much further, I kind of want to think about Oklahoma as a running team. Is do you think that'll happen? Do you think Oklahoma? Because when was the last time they weren't throwing the ball around like that? Well, the trail still goes air raid, but they run out of it a lot more. Okay. So yeah, you, they got a stable full of backs. They got three good running backs with Salt Chuck. Uh, who are the other guys? Now? Uh, I'm drawing, I'm drawing uh, like the freshman who's a stud. He was on my uh, fantasy Howie team. Harris? Is that his name? No, no, no. The freshman, I'm drawing a blank on his name right now. Well, but he's, Salt Chuck is, is one of the freshmen. Yeah, but it's not the guy. Hold on. The guy that's I been guess injured. when they had like... Uh, Adrian Peterson and uh, who's the other guy that played, went to Dallas? Uh, uh, Demarco Murray. Yeah, they were pretty uh, run heavy. Yeah, Tawi, Major. Tawi Walker, Marcus Majors, who I was referring to, and Tawi Walker is an, another freshman. No, he's a junior. Yeah, they, they have a loaded backfield, so uh, maybe running the ball, being more physical, might. Yeah, them. and Majors yeah. actually a senior, and maybe they don't yeah, give up no guy in the group. Yeah, Five hundred yeah. points uh, to every team they play. We'll see. We'll see. But uh, what do you think about also uh, South Carolina quarterback KJ Jefferson hitting the portal? And he's rumored to go to South Carolina. I don't know if you saw my tweet. 
Arkansas quarterback. Yeah. Yeah. What did I say? South Carolina quarterback. Well, he, he he's rumored oh, to go to South Carolina, but right. I put this uh, on top of that tweet because yeah. Who is that? that's just uh, uh, he's wearing yeah. the same shirt, right? <laughs> Isn't that, why would you do that? <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, I'd rather uh, stay with Bobby Petrino to tell you the truth. That's a good question. Beamer has uh he's a, he's a, a quarterback whisperer. Apparently got yeah, Rattler. Bobby to go. Petrino has Lamar Jackson up his sleeve, buddy. I would maybe stay with Bobby Petrino. That's true, but he probably doesn't <laughs> talk as good a game. I mean, it, unless KJ Jefferson's a sweet 19 year old intern, you know, I don't think he's got <laughs> that kind of game. <laughs> uh, Rutgers quarterback, Evan Simon announced he was transferring. I mean, everyone's transferring these days. Uh, Riley Leonard. I mean, Riley Leonard was the big one. How about Marcus Carroll, the running back for Georgia State? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wasn't he like leading Dog. the nation at, at yeah. some point? So, wait, Riley Leonard, they're saying he's rumored to Notre Dame until Mike Elko just says, here's $10 million to come play for Texas AM, right? <laughs> yeah. So, where do you guys think? I mean, I know this is a dumb question. I know we're going to hop into games and stuff, but you got Will Rogers. True lawn. You got some lawn chairs out there. Well, Will Rogers. I mean, Cam Ward talked that he's already been offered by like fifty people a or fifty bucks. schools. Yeah. Uh, but we're giving Connor Connor Stallions a hard time over here. <laughs> um, I heard Matt Rule saying on the press conference about you know good quarterbacks are going for a million, two million dollars. He seems to be a little too vocal about that. Yeah. Like, 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 uh, like, like have you been like contacting people. Like, like you bitching about it. Like, dude, you just took a, a big job knowing the landscape. Yeah. And, and, and remember he took $75 million of the, the Carolina Panthers. Wasn't it? Is that what his, uh, what was that was? buyout? No, maybe, maybe I'm getting confused. I don't know. Um, it just seems like he's complaining about it too much for someone who just got hired on less than 12 months ago. Well, who has the right to complain about it? Let me ask, do you have to have been at, you know, your I think complaining about it is 34 look. million. He got a thirty-four million dollar buyout, right? That's uh, a lot of money to not coach the Carolina Panthers. How about you spend some of your fucking money, Matt? Yeah. There you, go. you know what I mean? I think go. complaining about it is just a bad look. I mean, it is what it is. Deal with well, it. Well, and well, it doesn't have to be what it is. Every time something doesn't go your way in life, you don't just have to sit there and accept it. You can push back on it. I think if enough people said, "Hey, we don't like the landscape being like this," and I think there are a number of coaches that feel that way. Then yeah, it's probably better for them to be vocal. Okay, well then be a coach that's been there for a long time and sees okay. what's happening. Don't just walk in the well, door and say I think you're you. I think you're risking not getting with the times by saying that. Yeah, you're probably not helping yourself. Dabo. With the NIO. Yeah. And well, I mean, so if Riley Leonard goes to uh goes to Notre Dame, I find it hilarious that Notre Dame just does just punts on developing quarterbacks and they just go for the portal every year. They're gonna be like the, the uh Yankees. Why? Yeah. Why have? Why have a, a farm system? <laughs> yeah, know? we do have a farm system. It's called the shitty ACC. The thing is, <laughs> I do feel like there's some benefit to developing a quarterback yourself, you know, and not just taking a, a guy for a year. I think if Notre Dame gets in that habit too much, you might see them cap out. You know, they, they might have like a, a 10, 11 win season uh, or uh, uh, cap on the, the the process because yeah. I think it, I could be wrong. Are there teams? Are, have teams shown that with a brand new quarterback that, I mean, I guess Joe Burrow, but that even took two years, you know, has anyone else just stepped in and won a national championship as a new quarterback? Well, JT Daniels went six and O for Georgia that year. And they won the national championship. Okay. He got injured six games in Fair. I mean, uh, it, it, like look at Michael Penning or Bo Nix, they're transfers, but they're not one year guys. Yeah. Uh, Jalen hurts made the playoffs at Oklahoma. Yeah. True. Uh, Stroud. Wait. Stroud was a transfer, but he was a multi-year transfer, right? Not not Stroud. It was uh, Fields. I'm sorry, from Georgia. I'm sorry. That's, yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Fields from Georgia. Uh, but yeah, you're right. I mean, Alabama didn't really. I mean, does uh, Riley Leonard have multiple years of uh, eligibility? Two. Two. Okay, yeah. So maybe yeah. it's a good move. Uh, I don't He's know. Not as old as Hartman. <laughs> yeah, true. Well, you need another pandemic. Go eat some fucking bad <laughs> soup. You know what I mean? Uh, well, there's a new variant rolling around. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I can't. Every forensic files episode I watch, they just pump that uh, that Vax commercial. Oh yeah, every yeah. fucking commercial. Just, just really making it. me hate it. Yeah. Really making me hate it. And and, um, and his latest variant's the most dangerous one. 
Yeah. yeah. Watch yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> old people are dying. Newsflash. All right. Old people keep dying. Um, uh, by the way, Oregon State head coach Trent Bray, I did want to say this. He, his comments, he said, This is the only university I want to be head coach at. I'm a real leader. All right. And I'm going to show up when times are hard. You like this guy or what? I do. I don't know, man. Kind of throwing some shit at yeah, his old boss. Is. <laughs> yeah, that is. Yeah, now that yeah. I think about it. <laughs> like, right, get the fuck out of here, Jonathan. You want that? <laughs> hey, I mean, I was disappointed by Jonathan Smith there. Going to the evil. All, right, dude, all I know is I never, never trust coaches when they say something like that. That's if, true. If, yeah. if, in two years, if AM comes calling, yeah. <laughs> he'll be Sign on the first boat out yeah. of there. That they is start true. Dangling 10 mil in front of his face. <laughs> Uh, Trent Bray is 41. How old is Jonathan Smith? Got to be in his 40s because I watched him win a Fiesta Bowl. I guess that was 20 years ago. He might be in his 50s. He's now. 44. So there's a chance they're on the same squad together. Yeah. It does seem like some shade. Well, he's a defense player. You always hate the quarterback. That's true. You're getting, you know, getting all the glamour. You know what I mean? <laughs> he's been waiting to throw him under the bus he probably, for 20 he, years. He probably had some Rebecca he loved. And she was all about Jonathan, Jonathan Smith because he was the along. quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> so he's been holding on to that for a long time. Uh, folks, we're going to get into picking every game. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to hit on those. I'm, I'm, I might be missing a few other portal guys. Do you guys remember? Am I missing any big time portal guys? It's just every time you upload Twitter, it's like, oh, yeah. You become numb to it. You know what I mean? You're like, wait. Yeah, I just see like four or five. And I just, you know, in one ear, out the other. Let me ask you this What quarterback? What team is a quarterback away from being a college football playoff contender? Like if you're Penn state, are you completely content with drew Aller or no. would you try to go out and get cam ward EJ or Warner. EJ, oh, EJ Warner? We didn't mention him. He's oh, in yeah, the portal. Sure. Yeah. Um, which teams do you think right on the cusp? We know Deacon Hill is the answer at Iowa. We know, uh, you know, oh, dude, that might be your answer. Can, if Iowa can get a halfway decent quarterback, well, they, they have, have a what's his name offense. from Michigan who will be back next year and yeah. apparently won't uh, won't mi mention Michigan's name now. Yeah, he hates Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of would too <laughs> if I took them to the playoffs and they're like, ah, not good enough. Get the fuck <laughs> out of here. But I mean, who, who, what team out there do you think? It's got to be Penn State. Is I think the easy answer. Maybe, maybe Missouri. I know Brady Cook was all right, but could you upgrade with Brady Cook? Florida. Brady yeah. Cook was good. Alabama, you could I say see in a it way. At Missouri for a Clemson. little longer. Clemson, though, I feel like they're investing in Klubnik. I feel like yeah. that's a that's yeah. a process there. Um, That'll probably pay off. Auburn. I mean, I don't think Auburn will contend though with a quarterback. Yeah. Who, Tennessee could be way better. Tennessee, than maybe. Tennessee, Oregon maybe. State. Oregon State? Yeah. See, but what? they have Childs. I think DJ used the answer. Well, they have Childs also who was a freshman that they're very excited about. But maybe all those guys transfer. I don't know. Uh Florida State once Travis leaves. Oh, yeah, Florida State next yeah, year. One. Cam Ward yeah. there. Oh, Cam Ward was oh, that'd be pretty nice. nice. Yeah. Cam Ward is basically Charlie Ward. That'd be pretty yeah. sweet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so any any uh should we get a DNA check on that? Noah? <laughs> Noah? <laughs> No, look, I need you to follow Cam Ward around Pullman and uh, swab his DNA. All right, just just like one of those uh, forensic files. You wait for him to throw out his fucking Subway sandwich trash, right? And no, then no, you no. get that yeah, DNA. It's got to be the straw that he's drinking out of. Yeah, right? or the cigarette. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm guessing. I'm guessing he probably doesn't smoke. Well, <laughs> no, I smoke weed. I don't know. I've been to the Coog. I've been to that bar, the Coog in Pullman, and I feel like after a six or seven whiskey, everyone smokes. So. No, we're gonna need you to camp out at the Coog. You can still smoke the door. No, it's Washington, okay, dude. You that. fucking that's like a you'll get you'll get a death sentence. Smoking <laughs> indoors is just it, it it's like, amazing. It went on for that long. I, what it, was what, it's, what's what's more shocking the that that went on that uh, that long or that for like two or three decades you could smoke in the airplane? <laughs> the airplane, <laughs> the airplane, is, airplane no shot. is one Office, of the greatest. Too. In the office building too. I mean, airplanes are worse, but <laughs> airplane is like not only is it disgusting and like, it's a threat to bring yeah, it down. It's a right? major fire. <laughs> You're starting a fire yeah, essentially. Like compressed <laughs> gas and shit. <laughs> you can't exactly open a window to let you get right. a draft, you know. Gotta love this. Gotta dude, they didn't change that to like like 1990. Back when America was fucking America. Oh my god. Yeah, that's right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you I'm sorry. Uh, your, your your smoke's getting in my lungs. Hey, go fuck yourself. 
All right. <laughs> you take this slow death. All right. Uh, hey, my infant <laughs> is right here next to you. Secondhand smoke, right off the That's That's get, right. Yeah, get used to this shitty place called planet Earth. All right. <laughs> How's life taking yeah. forever? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what we're talking about, but anyway, I just thought that was a good, good little. How about Rutgers? Rutgers, a quarterback away from being like nine win team. Mm, Not a playoff contender. They go six and six, and they throw for like a solid buck twelve every, yeah, every set. But is that offense ever gonna? Yeah, they need a, a specific great play action quarterback. They need a statue. Will Rogers. No, he is not a, a play statue. action. Now, Will Rogers needs the air raid. Yeah. You, don't, you, don't, you don't want him in Piscataway. Or, yeah. Yeah. Who could they get then? Who, who is great at just popping up and being like six foot seven and throwing over the line of scrimmage after the defense has been sucked up? Deacon Hill? Deacon Hill is <laughs> not the guy. They should, right. they, they, should, they should go after Big Poff, Poff and Burger. He's not. I was. Not that he's in this all year. I'm just saying. Yeah, you know, I've been saying this all year. He's going to be in the FBS. KJ he's too Jefferson. Good. Yeah. KJ Jefferson could be a guy at Rutgers. No, KJ that's Jefferson. what they have right now. Oh, with that whims at? <laughs> yeah, they have Jefferson like mobile pass guys better that, than that. Your Jefferson game was putting up big time passing numbers last couple sure, years. Sure, sure. But the, my thing is like you're guaranteed when when you turn on a Rutgers game the past five years. Yeah. You're guaranteed to watch a pick six every game. <laughs> True. Right. I don't know that KJ Jefferson is that guy to, to correct. He's better than what they have. Well, what but like, he's an improvement for sure. When I see KJ Jefferson, I see a guy that is waiting, like, you know, stands tall in the pocket and waits for the receiver to come open into the last second and then hits him. And especially when you have an, a play action offense that you're going to work that off of, I think that, that, that helps, you know, you don't have to sit there and dissect the defense. That's not probably Spencer KJ. Petrus. He's in the portal. He's a very terrible uh, quarterback, but <laughs> sure. Go FCS. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, okay. We'll talk more when all the news comes. Let's get to picking winners. But before we do that, I want to tell you folks out there that the college football experience is brought to you by Bet Rivers. Bet Rivers run deep. Yes. That's my song. <laughs> That's now, the new jingle. Uh, look, we're brought to you by Bet Rivers. Bet Rivers is available in four, over 14 states. Plus, Ontario, Canada. And let me tell you, Bet Rivers has some of the best live betting markets in all the space. All right. And their betting menu is second to none, including a ton of props. How about this? How's here's my Bet Rivers par- play of the day. Give me New Mexico State and Diego pissing Pavia plus the points in Lynchburg, Virginia. Say Friday night. Let's go. There you go, folks. So sign up using our link for a risk-free <laughs> bet up to five hundred dollars. Just go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash bet rivers at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash bet rivers. Probably gambling call one eight hundred gambler. I like your excitement there. You know, bring in the energy. You know, we get at least one more, maybe two more years of Diego pissing Pavia. There we go. But how long is Jerry Kill going to be there? He's there forever. Are we sure about that? Yeah, He's doing a pretty damn good job. That's the first game to kick off this Friday conference USA championship. One of the only good ones. That's not in a dome, right? Uh, we got New Mexico state who lost at Liberty 33, 17 back on September 9th. But boy, is this New Mexico state team looking a lot better than then. The fuck is that? Uh, they're, they're catching 11. Where's the name of the stadium again? William stadium. Lynchburg, Virginia. I'm all over the points. Sprinkle I mean, a little bit of that plus three fifty money line. I don't know how much you can attribute it to a look ahead spot when New Mexico State throttled, absolutely dominated Auburn, and then the following week Auburn really should have beaten Alabama. You know, look ahead spot or not, the players are the same. You know, the talent is the same. You might not have put together an excellent game plan, but you're not like a completely different team one week to the next. You're mostly the same team. Yeah. You know, they might be pretty damn good in the grand scheme of things. Maybe they are a different team right now. Here's the, stat. the points. Oh. The, the stat that you want to know is that New Mexico state limited Auburn to 65 yards rushing a week later. Mm. Auburn ran for 244 yards on Alabama. Woo-hoo-hoo. Who's Jerry kills best friend who recommended the, the defensive coordinator for New Mexico state, Gary, Gary Patterson, Patterson. And what's the best way to slow down Liberty this year? What's their uh, best? W- w- what do they do best on offense? 
Uh, they they run that cha cha. They got Caden Salter. They run I, the football. Yeah, they're one of the top ranked yeah. teams in the country. So if New Mexico State can slow down their ru- rushing attack like they did against Auburn, then they have a chance to keep it close. And I think the Aggies can do that. I imagine Chadwell is probably doing something similar to what he had done at Carolina, which is a lot of like spread uh, looks with option and spread and pistol looks with option built into it. You know, just basically the marriage of all of the, like the schemes we've seen, whether it be power football or triple option football, and then also the spread with the read option and then RPOs. They're, they're just a very diverse scheme, but I do think you're right. It, it generally leads to a lot of running to your point. It's a different style of, of running than Auburn threw out there for sure. But still, I think having the game under their belt where they lost earlier in the season, which by the way, since then New Mexico state is undefeated in October and November. I'm taking the yeah. points. I'm with Colby. Uh, I think Liberty still might win, but I think this is a ball game. I think New Mexico State's live. Sure. I think they're live to win this. Ten thing. and three, pretty phenomenal. They lost by sixteen in Lynchburg, like you mentioned. Was that a realist, uh, like a, a a good like idea of what actually happened in that game, or? Well, I think that was also like if you add kills season last year, that's your what fourteenth game with the program. I just think they're more. They know what he wants. You know what I mean? They know what he wants a little bit more. You now. know what's crazy? They lost in the first five games to UMass and Hawaii. Yeah, and then they whooped Auburn's ass. I'm saying they they figured out what they yeah. want. That's what yeah. that's what shows you. Like they were still a team figuring themselves out early in the season. And no one has. They've, they've won eight, what nine in a row against some good teams. Like we mentioned Auburn, but they also beat Western Kentucky, Jacksonville State. Yeah, uh, those well, probably just those three. <laughs> the rest is the shitty conference USA, but still, just just winning those three games, those are three pretty good opponents. You said so, Jacksonville State, Auburn, and who Western Kentucky was, well, yeah, they finished their yeah. season really strong. And two uh, of those games were on the road, and this game is on the road, so I, I trust New Mexico State. I mean, they've won their last four road games, and Diego Pissing Pavia is on the Kelly LaPepe level, in my swagger. opinion, of like. Greatest humans to ever walk the planet. <laughs> mojo and just pure mojo. I can't well, fade a guy. Look, if you have a, a team with a quarterback that can kick your ass, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's a, a rarity. <laughs> <laughs> Extreme. Maybe Deacon Hill, but I mean <laughs> look, who was the last quarterback that could kick your ass? Like as far as like the rest of the te- someone else on the Jaylen team. Jalen Hurts could probably a lot of people's asses. Really? Yeah. You know how much he squats? Yeah. <laughs> you think you think you take Hertz to beat up Jameer Gibbs? Then you're saying yes, probably. Or who was their running back on that team? Was uh, Najee Harris? Maybe, or maybe that was before that. Yeah, that'd be a pretty good fight. Yeah. I don't know. You don't get that a lot. You got to look at the hefty lefty, Lorenzen. <sighs> That's true. That dude would a Canadian earthquake on your ass. Yeah. Let me say this. <laughs> maybe we need to watch out for Jerry Kill off of a, a bye week because prior to that bye week, like we said, two and three with two terrible losses. And then after the bye week, what eight, no, <laughs> and just dominating actually a lot of close wins. Dick but. Gersberger said he just ate an entire uh, sleeve of NECA wafers. <laughs> what, where, uh, like, did you make those yourself? Do they still make them? <laughs> what the fuck are NECA wafers? <laughs> <You don't know. laughs> uh, now I gotta look uh, these trust up. me. It's something <laughs> that uh, I hadn't thought oh. about in 20 years. Oh yeah. Yeah. These things. Now look, Liberty's also won five straight games by double digits. So they're just steamrolling opponents. Uh, well, with that said, I, I, I know Colby and I points. are taking the points. Somebody's been very quiet over there. Somebody's still yeah. thinking He's dancing which direction around. they're going to go. Rob Donaldson's in the chat saying Deacon Hill was ripping Irish car bombs at the bar last Wednesday. <laughs> okay, he'll kick your ass. Uh, yeah, Deacon Hill will fuck. Anyone named Deacon in life, you, you don't want to fuck with. All right? That's just, I've learned Rule that one. Yeah. Uh, New Mexico State plus 11, guarantee it. Not locking it, but. I guess I will not, lock it. Not much of a guarantee. I'm locking this. They're going to cover this. Easy play for pissing Pavia. It does seem like this should be very doable. And I'll keep these locks rolling. Hold on, hold on, hold on. One, one oh. second. But there's how many games is there? This how many FBS on FBS games is there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, t- ten games. Patty C. Colby Dant over under seven and a half dogs. Um, I mean, I'd have to go through it, but well, we'll, we'll get there. I guess yeah. don't do it. Don't do a, a projection. I just, I'm, you know, Colby loves them. 
the underdog. So I'm just curious as to how many dogs will be on. All right. So a few, a few. We're all one, on one down, one, one dog down. down. <laughs> Next up, we go to Las Vegas and that filthy dome that should be at the Niner Stadium and wherever the fuck that is, somewhere by San Jose. Uh Oregon, Washington. Oregon's laying nine and a half. Why? So let me get this straight. Michael Penix is two and zero against your little Dan Lanning guy. I go for it on fourth and five on my own ten yard line, right? Uh, nine and a half. Well, do we know something that does Vegas know something we don't know? Because Washington's playing for their CFP life, essentially. The only thing I can think of is that Penix everybody is injured, right? do what? That Penix is injured, right? Well, no, I mean, what well, the passing game and his his arm hasn't looked great the last two weeks. That's true. But I just think I agree with what you guys said in your recap show Saturday night is that everybody was on Oregon before they knew the line. So I think if, if Vegas set that line at anything under a touchdown, everybody would have been on Oregon. They almost had to put it over a touchdown. To when get we did the SGP show last night or no Monday night, 80% of the money was coming in on Oregon at nine and a half. Yeah. I mean, look, Washington hasn't really destroyed anyone since Cal in week four, their I biggest can't... margin of victory for yeah. the last eight games is but, 10 points. But that, it's like TCU last year though. They keep winning. True. true. And I kept expecting them to drop a game, but they keep on winning. And four of the last five of these matchups have all been decided by four points or less. Uh, the, the one game that was in Oregon won by 10, 26, 16 in 2021. But I mean, these games have all been very, very close. I'm taking the points all day and I'm locking it up because I I just don't think either defense is really going to be able to stop each other. Well, the first game was in the rain in Washington, right? A little yeah. bit. Yeah. So you would figure that kind of favors Oregon and Oregon be, being a more balanced uh, uh, offense, whereas uh, Washington being more pass happy in the dome in Las Vegas, you got to figure Washington's a little better off than they are in a rainstorm. You could argue Oregon, storm, but you could argue Oregon was the better team in Seattle. Earlier in the year, I mean, yes. they yeah. they, out, they out gained them. They threw for more yards. They ran for more yards. They won the time of possession. The, the, way, the, the way I battle. kind of break that down, I thought Washington played the better first half. I thought Oregon played the much better second half, and I thought yeah. Washington kind of stole it. Yeah. Um, but I think it was a very fifty-fifty type of game. I mean, like yeah. when I say Oregon probably deserved it, it wasn't by much. It wasn't sure. by much. Sure. Um, uh, not by ten points. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm on. I'm on Washington here. To I gotta go that. Washington too. Yeah, Jack Whitten in the chat goes. We sleep on Tulane for playing with their food, but we don't give Washington a hard time. That's a That's good true. point. It is good point. I guess the problem is, is that like I respect the Pac-12's teams this year, whereas the AAC losing UCF and uh, and Cincinnati and Houston, like Tulane should be whooping all these fucking Conference USA teams' ass. Yeah, well, true, true. We we give them a hard time, but you know, to their credit, when when it got serious at the end of the season with Florida Atlantic and UTSA being two of the more challenging teams, they kind of whooped both of them. And uh, Florida Atlantic has four wins, buddy. That's not one of the more challenging teams. <laughs> when Casey Thompson they got were injured, still, uh, uh, a, a, uh, ECU beat them. A lot of people right? were saying money line uh, Florida Atlantic. And, that was their one FBS win, right? <laughs> yeah, I think we might have even said money line Florida Atlantic on an upset just because. Uh, well, uh, yeah, because they kept playing with their food. That, right, that's three, fair. Two but, point win against Rice. Three but, point win. But against at the same time, like ECU. I just feel like they should be dominating. The Conference USA was awful. We thought even when when we did this, this episode of the AAC grabbing the CUSA teams, we were just like, they're getting Rice, they're getting Charlotte, they're getting you know all these teams that you know the UTSA was the only one we really respected, uh, and we I thought. I thought Tulane should have won by more against these opponents. So yeah, they definitely should have. Yeah. I'm just saying we look at Washington. Maybe we should give them a little more shit for, you know, not blowing teams out, but when it comes down to it, they win games. And when they really put their mind to it, maybe like Tulane, they can end up blowing, blowing teams out. Yeah. So we're all on both dogs Friday night. Both yes. dogs sprinkle that money line. Parlay here's that bet, shit. Yeah. Here's a bet. I already made. Let me know if you guys like it. I, I did a two team underdog teaser. For Friday night, so I I moved up Washington to what like fifteen and a half. And I moved up Liber uh, New Mexico State to what seventeen. I already made that bet just because I didn't feel great about the Oregon Washington game, so I, I gave myself a little bit of a a buffer there. That's fair. I like it. 
but I just say parlay both. Stop being a coward. <laughs> right? Well, um, let me say this. Have we ever had a more compelling uh conference championship Friday night game? I mean, because the Heisman will also likely be decided. Well, you know, the the, the, the the playoffs in the 12 team next year will be Friday night. Friday and Saturday. Yeah, Friday and Beautiful. Saturday. Fuck. So yeah. uh that's a good point. That's a good point there. Let's good jump. Friday night watching. Yeah. Well, although I guess U- USC Utah last year. Yeah, but a uh, Heisman wasn't on the line. Oh, I guess. Well, I can give a shit about Caleb the Williams actually won it. Yeah. But um, I mean, I guess unless they give it to Jaden Daniels or I'm sorry, Jalen Daniels, because I have a I have a future there. But uh, <laughs> um, let's hop on over to Saturday. But before uh, we get to the FBS slate, I'm not going to give you lines. I just want to inform our great audience that the D two football playoffs are down to uh, tomorrow, uh, Saturday nine in the morning, slippery rocks, taking on cuts down. Shout out to Andre Reed, the former Buffalo bill. Great graduate of cuts down NC Nick. You got a lead there with slippery rock. That's the four seed against the three seed. So Tiffin, you got upset by slippery rock. They're a slippery fucking team. The, the, we got some upsets happening. Cuts down, took down Charles down West Virginia. Cuts down sounds know. like the tougher team. Cuts down. Yeah. Now, where, where are rocks? these teams located? Slippery Rocks in both in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Yeah, exactly. both in Pennsylvania. So the other side of the bracket is is going Chalk Harding. Shout out to Tanya. And uh, two, the two seed Grand Valley State. Brian Kelly and his family once uh, used to used to used to handle business there. And then the the south side of the bracket, Colorado School of Mines, still doing it. For the one seed still alive, they just they just beat Augustana. 56 to 10, right? They're going to be playing central Washington though. And they've been kind of a, a, a Cinderella story. They beat the two seed that, you know, they, this is one of the final seeds to get in there. Uh, John Kitten is alma mater there. They've won two in a row and now they're playing Colorado school of mines. And then on the other side of that is Lenore Ryan and Valdosta, the four verse three. NC Nick, uh, you're going, who's, who do you think uh, is going to win the championship here? I'm not mistaken. Valdosta is a Mike Leach school, right? Yes. Yes. Valdosta. Valdosta in honor they're taking of coach. on. They're taking on Lenore Ryan this week. Oh, they're going to steamroll them. Valdosta is yeah. in Georgia. Uh, down there in Georgia. I want to say I read that that was the winning. Uh, Harbaugh was saying that's the winning his high school uh, football program of all time. But still, Jim Harbaugh or Jack? Jim Harbaugh was saying, yeah. Ch- yeah John? Yeah, John. Yeah. They, they all, uh, they, they, uh, whatever. They strike me as guys that would know that kind of information, especially Jim. He's who do you like? Who do you like to come out of that Colorado School of Mines, huh? The ore diggers. That's right. Who is their? Uh, who is the guy that uh, invented the? Job? Say? <laughs> Bob Stitt. Bob Stitt. Uh, he's not still there, is he? No, no, he's not. He's he's Long hanging gone. out. D three. Have you know Mount Union got upset by Alma, so Alma is taking on Cortland this Saturday by, morning. By what Alma? A L M A Alma. Oh, right, okay. Wisconsin lacrosse handling business took down Aurora. I'm more of a Wisconsin uh, Whitewater fan myself. Well, they're still in it too, but the, the Wisconsin lacrosse is taking on North Central. Remember North Central out of Chicago? Uh, they had a great season last year. Meanwhile, John Hopkins doing the damn thing took down Western Connecticut, took down Union. Now they take on Randolph Macon. While on the other side, uh, NC Nick's at a, at a, he's at an odds here because Wisconsin Whitewater's taking on Wartburg. <laughs> Someone's got to win. Wartburg put it on Whitworth 42 to 20 last week. A lot of W's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tongue twister here. And Wisconsin Whitewater took down a Wheaton 49 42. <laughs> Everyone gets W's in uh, D2, apparently. Patty, see who you going for in D3? You going, uh, uh, you, you going, uh, Cortland? You going, uh, I'm going Johns Hopkins, baby. Oh, you local. You you're Maryland, going Maryland like over Randolph Maryland. Macon, Virginia? Oh, oh, Randolph Macon. I went on a recruiting visit to Randolph Macon. Yeah, they told you you weren't worth it. That was the one that was the, uh, <laughs> the, the weight room was in shambles. <laughs> They're like, dude, 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 give us. This. They literally couldn't even turn on the lights in that weight room. They were like, it was like a dark, like cobweb infested. I was like, <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's great. But I That's am rooting great. for it. and and like we said, Randolph Macon is the Hornets and uh Nick and I are Hornets. You know? There you Nick, go. They're Hornets too, aren't they? Huh? I didn't, yeah. I didn't know that. Okay. So I believe maybe they're the yellow jacks. So, double check that. So Nick, you're going Whitewater or you're going Wartburg? White well, yeah, Whitewater. <laughs> Wisconsin Whitewater's got three W's. <laughs> <laughs> they're the yellow jackets. I stand corrected. Oh, the yellow jackets. Okay. 
Uh, folks, that's what I'm saying. You got all this good time stuff going on here. Uh, don't, don't just, don't just, you got the NAIA too, which I didn't even pull up the bracket on that, but you yeah, got don't, that. Don't too. worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, we're good. <laughs> I know the Tigers knocked off the Wildcats last week in the NAIA form, uh, in Baldwin city, Kansas, which is, is where every, every, uh, it's not, it, there's some say that's where the heart of college football resides. Uh, Saturday morning, 9 a.m. Unfortunately, they're playing this shit ass game in Detroit, Michigan. One of the worst stadiums, Ford Field. Miami, Ohio's catching eight against Toledo. Nope. Toledo minus the points. You know why? The Daqu- Daquan Finn from the great city of Detroit. He's gonna, he's gonna slice and dice his Red Hawk team. I'm laying the eight. And see, Nick, what are you doing here? I thought you had been on the dog again. Uh, unfortunately, I agree with you. I think as soon as Gabbert went down, this uh, Red Hawk offense has just been atrocious. Uh, they th- these two teams have already played once. It was a 21-17 Toledo win in Oxford in mid-October. That's that's a game when that Brett Gabbert, Gabbert got hurt in. Uh, mm. I just can't ride Miami with that bad of an offense. Uh, I think it's close for, through the first half. I think Toledo eventually pulls away. I think Daquan Finn does have a big game. Patty C, what are you doing here at the uh, this ridiculous oh. arena? Look, I had declared myself uh, a Toledo Rockets from day one, right? Fan within the yeah. From I was trying to figure out who my I'm still trying to figure out who my Mac school is. I think year to year I have to choose which Mac. No, school. you're a Toledo Ball State. Yeah, that's true. Well, I, I'm allowed to change every year. I feel like that that's the fun of the Mac. Is yeah. you just it's the same. Every team is the exact same, and you just choose which one you like most. Um, you, you know, the team more equipped at dome football is definitely Toledo. Probably. Yeah. But look, uh, Miami, Ohio is having a miracle season. They did beat the Cincinnati Bearcats crosstown rival. Is that miracle? Uh, it is for them since it had been 15. You know, they losses. host Cincinnati next year. I think they're going to be favored. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> oh, buddy. Um, Somebody look. was trying to tell me, I think it was Juvio Farms was telling me that Satterfield to, to a Duke is a done deal. I was like, I'm not buying that one second. <laughs> oh my God, I, th- I think he was fucking with me. <laughs> please let that happen. <laughs> Come uh, home to the great state of North Carolina. Yeah, that would not I happen. think he was fucking with me. <laughs> uh, look, uh, Miami played pretty good defense. They haven't given up more than 28 points uh, since week two. Riding the Red Hawks. I am riding the Red Hawks. Okay, fire away. Stout defense. So at 9 a.m., we got that. That's going to be on one of them. But on the pupil will be this game. Mike Gundy catching 15 and a half against the Texas Longhorns in Arlington, Texas. It's way too many fucking points. Give me Oklahoma State. Lock. Where's my theme music? Oklahoma State's won six of eight against Texas. Texas, it's been a fun little story for you guys, all right? Your little sissy little uniforms, your burnt orange, your little fucking little. Choirs, choir boys that go down there and, uh, you know, got your little steer, you know, they're wearing that little hat. <laughs> they got the hot ass cowgirls, though, uh, for cheerleaders. Oklahoma State was super pissed off when that news. I, I, I've i heard that they were the most pissed off out of any Big 12 school of Oklahoma and, and Texas leaving. So Mike Gundy has a chance. To get that lifetime contract, if you deal them a blow and kick them I mean, out of the playoffs, that dude should already have a lifetime contract. That's yeah. true. As much as it's I would too many points, man. Love to see uh, Texas, you know, screw up the playoffs and 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 create chaos there, and make sure that no one has the argument that going on the way out, they never should have changed it. Uh, I do. I would still rather watch Oklahoma State beat Texas and send them out of the Big Twelve with a loss. If you could tell me. Kobe, what is the one win you went this entire weekend? This would be it. It's Oklahoma State over Texas. Sure. And that's probably why people should take our pick in this game with the greatest salt. <laughs> yeah. Look, I've been playing this game with Texas for weeks on end. Like, ah, screw them. They're gonna lose. They're gonna and they keep throttling their uh, uh opponents. throttling a couple. Couple of them. Yeah. Either way, uh they've uh, been covering more yeah. often than not. So the real I'm question ask- is can Texas slow down the Olive Garden? The nation's great- leading rusher, Olive yeah. Gordon. I That's think they right. can, but can 35 year old quarterback, Alan Bowman, make them pay because their secondary has been ass all year. And believe it or not, the big 12, not the old big 12, because they had quarterback problems throughout this conference and, well, yeah. and Texas played what seven or eight backup quarterbacks. So no one's been able to exploit the, the glaring weakness of Texas's team. Alan Bowman, 
You can do this. Throw the ball around all around the field, old school Big 12 style. However, it's never ending possible season at Olive Garden. So <laughs> Ollie Gordon may have to get off here. Well, well, only on one himself. team really outrushed Texas this year. And that was Oklahoma. So mm. if Oklahoma State can do the same, which if anybody's capable, it, it might be the nation's leading well, rusher. It actually, though, you know what was tricky about the Oklahoma one? It was Dylan Gabriel that had over 100 yeah. yards rushing. True. That and, was the so, difference in that game. Bowman's yeah. not going to do that. Yeah. So, but to me, if you can exploit the secondary, like I said, they've played so many backup quarterbacks, just exploit the secondary. It's there for you. Come on, Gundy. Well, that, I just that's think, a good point. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. Daddy. I was just going to say that that's a good point about, you know, Oklahoma just having one more piece that Texas's defense couldn't handle and being able to exploit it over and over having, having the balance to like, look for what Texas couldn't handle and, and, and exploit it. Whereas Oklahoma, I don't know if Ollie Gordon may be running into a brick wall. Well, who's the most expo- experienced quarterbacks that, that Texas has played <laughs> good, it's by good far point. Dylan Gabriel. They lost. Yeah. Alan Bowman will be the most ex- uh, experienced by far. But not that's true. Threat. Not dual threat, but if he can if he can distribute the ball better than most Sprinkle of the quarterbacks, a little bit on that plus five hundred money line, it would be off brand for us to not take Oklahoma State. Horns, I got it down. Do got it. Horns do it. down. Look, got to. you got. You guys did it to me earlier this year, and I was the one that gave you guys horns down, and you guys were both horns up. This time, I'm going horns up. All right, you guys. Like are going You're laying up. the fourteen and a half. Yeah. Or was it 15? 15, 15, 14, and a half. 15 and a half. Yeah. I'm laying it with Texas. You're an idiot. Uh, okay. Next up. Still at that 9 a.m. slot. We're jumping over, folks, to the FCS where Reese Poffenberger, they were practicing in the snow at their home stadium or their practice field, whatever, in Albany, New York. They're hosting the Richmond Spiders at Casey Stadium. Last time they played there. Richmond or last time these two teams played each other, Richmond won 23, 20 in 2019, but big Poff was not there. Then uh, this game's fantastic. Definitely better than the Mac championship, by the way, if you're, if you have two screens, put this game, cause this game's up in the cold at Casey stadium, Reese Poff Poffenberger against Richmond, who seems to be somewhat of a blue blood. Uh, Albany is laying six. Hmm. I even see a six and a half out there too. NC Nick, I'm riding Big Poff minus the points. These little spiders think they're going to come over that, come up to Albany, New York. Great and, Danes and, are undefeated at, at home this year. You can't fade one of the best quarterbacks in the whole FCS. You know I'm riding Big Poff. My my uh, Twitter follower, uh, my my Twitter friend. Yeah, if I could say that's true. You got Big Poff. I got. I got Tom Cruise, you know, I, hanging I, on to that one. I think I won that. <laughs> Go uh, uh, Tom Cruise does his own stunts. Kind of a badass. As much as it's weird that he jumps up on a couch and dances yeah. with Oprah and shit. He does uh, do his own. When I saw him go off that cliff in that fucking motorcycle in the, st- in, uh, not on the actual movie, but the actual uh, credits. Yeah. Like the uh, no. deleted scenes or whatever behind yeah. the scenes. Kind of. I don't think Reese Poffenberg is big in Scientology. I'm just going <laughs> to Has there ever Not been yet. Tom Cruise? Tom Cruise. Wait looking... till he starts winning. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Tom Brady's into it. People don't know that. All right. Yeah, anyone who is into Scientology it ma- magically stays. Tom like Brady and Tom Cruise have the same life. face. Yeah, it's like they definitely some. They got the scient the alien face. It's the alien face where it's like they're, they they're dipping into something. Yeah. 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 Uh, the fountain of youth. That's what I'm saying. Sam Cassell's down there working on him. Uh, <laughs> let me say this: uh, a couple of uh, common opponents. Uh, were, uh, are these uh, conference foes here? Albany won the CAA, but Richmond uh, was right there. Right there, we got might even got a share. Richmond against Stony Brook. Richmond won by one. Albany won by 18. Albany beat Rhode Island by 25. Uh, Richmond beat Rhode Island by seven. This I'm doing the uh, common opponent thing here. Richmond beat uh, Maine by 11. Uh, Albany, Albany beat them by 16. Beat, should have beat Marshall. They were winning at Marshall for like majority of the game. Marshall barely got out of there. William and Mary. Uh, Richmond beat by one. Uh, uh, Albany beat by 16. So look, I think it is a 
guarantee. I'm gonna lock Albany to cover six and a half. Big pop at baby. home. Let's at home. go, Look. folks. ESPN Plus, ESPN Plus. That game's on. Uh, still at 9 a.m. Youngstown State, the Penguins. Patty C. They're heading to Villanova Stadium to take on Howie Long's alma mater. This game's fantastic. Uh, all at the same time, folks. Uh, Youngstown road favorite laying two and a half on the road. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Give me the Wildcats of Villanova. NC Nick, what are you doing here? Well, Villanova is also undefeated at home this year, much like Albany, but here's where that ends. I like the senior quarterback, Mitch Davidson for the Penguins. Lit it up and, last week. And I'm going to fade Northeast football here because I don't consider Ohio Ooh. Northeast Ooh. football. This is the Jaworski bowl. <laughs> <That's Ron? awesome. laughs> yeah, he went to, he played it. The Polish rifle played at <laughs> Youngstown state. And then he got super famous in Philadelphia with the Eagles. So this is the Jaworski Bowl. I'm dub deeming it the Jaworski Bowl. Yeah, I was I was going to bring this up earlier, but the the conversation switched. What's a better football state, Ohio or Pennsylvania? Mm. I'm going to say Ohio. It's tough. Football, Pennsylvania has including pro. pros. That's true. High school. Pro. I'm going to say a push, but I guess because of Pittsburgh, they... who's got the more? Who's got the legends though? Pittsburgh, Ohio, uh, Pennsylvania. But I think Ohio probably has a lot of high school football legends too. Right, I guess. Um, I'm going Ohio and I'm going Youngstown. Go Penguins. I think Ohio is a slightly better football state. Um, well, no, Broadway Joe will have something to say about that. Go to Beaver true. Falls, Pennsylvania. That's He'll true. spit in your face. Dan Marino, Joe Montana, Montana, too, Montana, yeah. Johnny Unitas, too. Johnny Unitas too. If you yeah. have four of the top <laughs> ten right there. It's true. It's true. Uh, boy. Here give you go. me, give me. Uh, Youngstown or not? No. Well, Villanova has fucked over a few JMU seasons. That's true. Yeah. I guess I got to, you know, for that reason, and we beat Youngstown uh, on our en route to it. I think we beat them in the national championship game, right? Yeah. So I guess there's a special place oh, in my heart oh, for oh. Youngstown. We got uh, a lock battle in the chat here. Rob Donaldson says Ohio. Jenna Watson says Pennsylvania all day. Oh, snap. Those two need to go at it. There we go. Scrapping. Uh, penguins. I'm on the Penguins. Yeah, go with those Penguins. Uh, all right. And then we hop over to the 10 a.m. slate. Like you're not done with FCS yet, buddy. 10 a.m. You got a rematch. They played earlier this year in the SoCon, where Furman escaped the Chattanooga Moccasins 17 to 14 on November 4th. That was at Chattanooga. Now the Mox, after beating Austin P, have to head down to Paladin Stadium in Greenville, South Carolina. To take on the Paladins and uh Furman is laying six flat six. Oh, 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 oh. I'm taking, I'm taking the points. I think the mocks are going to give them a game. What are you doing here, NC Nick? I completely agree. I mean, you wonder at, at what point is the stage too big for freshman QB for Furman Carson Jones, the more experienced quarterback Chase Artipoas. Yeah, is that how you pronounce it for Chattanooga? The one-time UCLA commit. Has, but I has, go ahead. I hear Tyler Huff might be back for for Furman. Either way, you know I I like going the dog here and taking the points in a rematch where the first game was only a by a field goal. Yeah, that game was in Chattanooga, and like you said, they lost. Then they got throttled at Alabama. That was a body blow uh, that they took and still barely squeaked by Austin P. Uh, they were dogs against Austin P. Though. Well, and they did that on the road, so that's pretty yeah. impressive, I guess. Second, uh, third, uh, end of a back to back to back road. I can't take Chattanooga here. I got to take, take the Paladins to cover. All right, move it along. Look, we're still in the FCS zone here. If you, we're going chronologically, time wise, uh, and that's a good point. Both Marvin Harrison Senior and Junior are Pennsylvania, but they're also well, juniors. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, juniors Ohio also because he's playing college there. So like, mm. where do you, you where know, you draw that line? Where do they get credit for? Let me say this though. Pittsburgh Steelers, six championships. Eagles won. The Eagles uh, got some championships pre NFL, yeah. pre pre Super Bowl. That's true. Yeah. I guess so did the Browns, though. I was gonna say no true. Super Bowls for the Browns or Bengals, but Ohio State is definitely a better program historically than Penn, than Penn State. State. Yeah. And high school football is a coin I'm flip. Sh- I'm shocking that D Bettis is, is repping P- uh, PA where he's the uh, 
the uh, Buckeye guy. Surprise. Yeah. That's like uh, the cowboy fan in DC. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh, that's very yeah. prevalent. I yeah. never knew yeah. where that came from. Um, Bama's. You know what that yeah. is? <laughs> Bama's. Uh, Sac State is going to Vermilion, South Dakota. And see, Nick, you, you still haven't been to Vermilion, have you? No, never. N- yeah. Never been. Well, it's, the, it, it, it's next on my bucket list. Though. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I, it's, I, I got a feeling it's close to the Badlands. Uh, the Dakota Dome is going to be rocking because the Coyotes are hosting the Hornets of Sac State. Who, man, last week's fucking Sacramento State, uh, North Dakota game, absolutely insane. The Sac State got up twenty-eight to seven, and North Dakota battled all the way back to tie the game up in the final five minutes. And then Sac state just drives on the field and wins the game. Uh, you thought, uh, you know, cause that was on the road for Sac state. Once you had all that home momentum with North Dakota, I was like, there's no way they're winning this, but now cool under pressure, Caden Bennett getting it done. But here's the thing. I think South Dakota much tougher than North Dakota. So when I see the coyotes laying two, I'm going to lay the two Vermillion's going to be rocking. Give me the coyotes minus the two and see Nick, what are you doing here? Do you have to ask? Yeah, he never was Hornets. much of a Hornet. Hornets. Either, so. <laughs> nope, I mean, he never was. He, he doesn't get it. Yes, Caden <laughs> Bennett, dual threat QB. He's the difference maker. Uh, they knocked off North Dakota. They're gonna knock off South Dakota and keep this rolling. Don't forget, Sacramento State beat Stanford this year. Woo, woo! They all on the farm. They did get rolled by so- uh, Sac- uh, South Dakota State. So well, everyone does. That's true. <laughs> Can't so did South Dakota. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who are you taking, Pax? You go ride with the Hornets? I'm riding with the Hornets, baby. Oh, well, at 11 o'clock, we got Buzz, w- Buzz, Sting, Sting. Speaking of South Dakota State, they are hosting Mercer, the Bears who survived Gardner Webb. So that was a defensive struggle. But man, South Dakota State's laying 32 against Mercer, and that is too many fucking points. Mercer's got a good defense. I think. The Dyke House will be rocking, Patty C. <laughs> right? Always so, is. <laughs> uh, Brookings, this uh, they have uh, one of the best end zones with the checkered. You know, shout out to all the teams yeah. that do the checkered end zones. Yeah, you know. Beautiful look. Uh, I'm taking the points. NC Nick, what are you doing here? You're you're picking a team from Macon, Georgia, going up to South Dakota. <laughs> They're getting the numbers too big in December. Carter Peavy is going to do a, just this is enough. Like, 52 to three material. The Jackrabbits still have like Mark Gronowski, you know, yeah. Isaiah Davis. These guys have been around forever now. The brothers rabbits roll. I'm going to lay the big number. They got these brothers uh, at the wideout spots. Uh, two brothers. What's the, what's their fucking names again? Uh, uh, it is janky. The, yeah, janky. The janky, oh, guys. janky and uh, Jackson janky. Janky is not a good name for uh, <laughs> impressing anyone. <laughs> You getting janky over there uh, and taking Mercer? Well, no, I'm not taking Mercer. Mercer is new to the party. In fact, they've been slowly getting better. I'm going back to uh, 2019. This is their first playoff berth since at least that long. I haven't gone back even further than that, but they've been a pretty mid team. And now they're stepping up and facing an undefeated. Look, South Dakota State is still on their ascent to North yeah. Dakota State level. This and, is and, a. And they are the train. Georgia of the FCS. Yeah, that's right. Mercer of all teams should appreciate that. That's right. <laughs> all right. We're hopping over to the noon slate now where we got a big one here. Boise state UNLV, the UNLV is giving away free tickets. No, I've gone to this fucking game. You're in the championship. You're hosting it. This is what you get. You filthy mountain mountain West conference. All right. <laughs> Invite me out to uh you're lucky. This happened this year. Not this last summer. I'd be there talking to Talking to them, saying, "What are you guys doing? Leaving San Jose State out? Uh, they're they're giving yeah. away free tickets because no one's going to this fucking game." <laughs> oh. uh, Boise State's laying two and a half. I'm all over Boise here. Lock it up. Boise's interim head coach is auditioning for the head coaching position. He's undefeated since he took over. I think they're going to put it on this little sissy UNLV running rebel team. <laughs> NC Nick, what are you doing here? And you know, also healthy is Ashton Genty, the running back for Boise, who Dog. is uh, quietly one of the best running backs in the country. He missed a couple games, still has over eleven hundred rushing yards, over five hundred receiving yards, and and how many touchdowns here? Uh, Eighteen touchdowns. This guy was a three star from Frisco, Texas. That is Frisco, Texas, is the heart of football in America. We know this, Colby. We've talked oh, about yeah. it before. 
Amen. Uh, Amen. You know, you know, his only P5 offers were Cal and Kansas. And he chose Boise instead. Shout out to Lance gonna... Leipold, though, coming in, coming in hot. True. He's going to run yeah. wild. I'm going to go Boise here. I, for, you know, I still don't trust UNLV for some reason. You know, and I think for some, re for some reason, I mean, the, the fact they've only beaten one team with a winning record. <laughs> That's a good reason. <laughs> uh, let me say this. You know, they beat an air force in Wyoming. That's right. The two now. I'm sorry. Two. Uh, yeah. There. I mean, look, UNLV has been playing decent football. We got to give them credit. Nine and three. They, San Jose state whooped their ass. They last did. Week. The Spartans should be in this game. Look, that doesn't mean that football gods are going to make them just because suffer. the Spartans are the best team in the conference. Doesn't mean that, uh, what kind of championship game is this? Boise is definitely better than, uh, what kind of championship game is this? Maybe, maybe the PAC 12 should play, uh, you know, another, another PAC 12 championship with Colorado and, uh, Arizona state. All right, that's essentially what's going on here in the Mountain West. Boise did beat San Jose State themselves. In fact, Boise's losses, outside from that whooping they took at Washington week one, two point loss against UCF, three point loss at Memphis, one point loss at Colorado State, seven point loss at Fresno. They're not that bad. They're they're not that far away from like an eleven and one season right now. Yeah. Uh gotta go Boise here. If UNLV does not fill out that stadium with the conference championship, at there's going to be more Boise fans there because they'll actually travel down to yeah. Vegas, get all shit faced. What a, what an embarrassment! Bo Boise fans well, a long time ago, what 10, 12 years ago, Colby and I went to Boise at Virginia Tech in FedEx Field, Maryland. Yeah, and there was a good Boise showing all the way outside DC. Oh yeah. Boise is going to definitely travel. go to Vegas. Yeah. Well, I've traveled some just around, you know, just at the airport to different places. And I keep running into Boise state jackets and shit. You know what I mean? The fans go out to those games. So uh, what does it take? Because Vegas, uh, you know, really showed out when Vegas played against DC in the, uh, in the, uh, and at Stanley cup finals, they went, they had crazy fans. They're like the Toronto Raptors. They had their own little courtyard where everyone's going. But you nuts. know what it is, man, is they have a shit ton of transplants. And uh, like, they'll just but do you just gotta shit. dangle the word championship yeah. in front of people in Vegas, and they come flock. Apparently not. They're giving out free tickets. <laughs> yeah, apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> it is uh, a big ass stadium. Uh, all right, moving along. We're back to the noon. So that's a, that's going on at noon. Uh, there's no other FBS games on at noon, but there is a heater in the FCS as the Bison of North Dakota State head to Bozeman, Montana. Snow in the forecast. Oh, this is FCS football at its finest. This is. This is absolutely. So North Dakota State beat Montana State in the playoffs a year ago, 38 mm. 10. But that was in Fargo. Now you got to go to Bozeman in the snow. <laughs> this is fucking beautiful. Uh, uh, the line currently sitting at Montana State minus two and a half. I will lay it. With the Bobcats. Mm, revenge is a dish best served cold. It is cold. It's dome a dome team. Old. Little little foo foo <laughs> dome team there. Come uh, check out the Fargo Dome. Hunter Lepke's gone. John Riggins yeah. two point oh has graduated. Uh, yeah. He's gone. They only got this Cam Miller guy. Uh he's no Chris Miller. What time is that kick? Noon. Noon. You listen to the fucking show. Morning. <laughs> Uh, morning <laughs> forecast, 26 degrees. I'm sorry. I don't want uh, listen warm, to kind of warm, all of the fucking screaming that comes out of your mouth. Colby. <laughs> I think my favorite part of the show is when Colby shits on Patty. <laughs> I missed one that. thing and he's just like, <laughs> I've pulled the list dumps on my head. They love when Colby shits on Patty. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit. Uh, so when is this snow starting? Well, that's what I want. Got any weathermen up there listening? Well, while you're pulling that up, uh, you, first of all, you know Montana State is my Montana school, where you favor. Those well, what happened in the, the brawl of the wild, you little sissy? You came <laughs> over to Missoula, and you called out those hippies. Those hippies beat the tar out of you. Well, that was different. <laughs> uh, yeah, but honestly, I know Montana State does not lose in Bozeman. Uh, I, I count 26 straight home wins. You got to go back to 2019, the last time Montana State lost at home. It's not going to happen this year either. Well, Let's were any of those games the best, against North Dakota State? This is the best game. No, no, no. Including don't care. FBS, this is the best game of the whole fucking weekend. Yes. Well, including FBS. Including FBS. Oh, no, there's a no. little thing called Georgia, Alabama. Alabama. Yeah, but it's at that dome. It's just boring. 
<laughs> that game's boring. Okay, if well, you play, if you play that I'm between be the hedges, <laughs> of course I'm going to watch it. I watch all football, but it's, if you play that between the hedges, then it's interesting. You play that in Tuscaloosa, it's a lot more. Visually speaking, I have to agree with you. This is going to be the most awesome, and the, the level of football that's being played, it's right up there. I'll yeah. give you that. I'll give you that. Uh, <laughs> now Montana State was what seed last year? When they uh, lost against North Dakota State, weren't they pretty high? They, I might have been the two or three I seed. Think they were. Yeah, I think maybe they the got... three. They might have been the three. Yeah. So I mean, look, they probably do have revenge on the mind. Pretty hardcore. North Dakota State. No, even if South Dakota State's taken away that title, they're still. I mean, North Dakota State is really the Alabama of FCS. South Dakota State, like you said, is the Georgia. So I, I'm sure Montana State wants to take down the Alabama. So I'm going to go Montana State at home. Welcome We're to all, the right side. Can we lock this? I'm locking all these games. There's not enough games. I'm betting all of them. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair. I'm probably going to do the same. Uh, all right. That's the, the noon slate is done. So you're just watching those games because there's no other noon game on for some stupid reason. And then at one o'clock comes your little filthy Alabama, Georgia game. Oh. All right. In the fucking Chick-fil-A center or whatever the fuck they call it. Mercedes Benz center. Who wants to watch this one? Yeah. <laughs> I honestly, it's like a turnoff when they play it in this fucking game in this stadium. Like they never play in the regular season because the SEC plays in the regular season once every seventy-five years. True. So it's like, oh, the one time we get to see the two best teams, do we get uh, it between the hedges? No. I'm pretty sure just, when just, they just wait till they expand even further. <laughs> right. I'm sure, sure that'll make it more uh, frequent. Well, they're getting rid of division, so they they actually will play more often. I feel like when they played in the regular season that one time, and Georgia was wearing the all black, and they got whooped by Alabama. Wasn't that in the dome too? Didn't they even play the regular season game in the Georgia dome? I feel like that was the case. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure about that. Yeah, I don't but recall. It was a lot of cocktails ago. Um, <laughs> George is laying five and a half in Atlanta, where they just played in Atlanta last week against Georgia Tech. So yeah. Playing at Georgia Tech Stadium. Come on. Did it last week. I'm all over the Bulldogs. I'm laying the five and a half. Let's go. I think Kirby Smart will have a plan to dial up this. Uh, a nice little defense on this uh, yeah. Jalen Milrow. Yeah, not, uh, rush yeah. him with more than three and yeah. give him less yeah. than a minute to the yeah. pick his receiver. I'm all over the minus five. I feel pretty good about it. I'm actually going to lock it. Let's go. Go, dogs. <laughs> what are you doing here, Patty C? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if I agree with you. Five and a half. Look, history. What does history favor, favor either team at this point? I mean, Georgia's won the last two. I mean, Georgia's won 29 straight. I guess, no. Yeah, Georgia has no. Georgia's won two of the last good. three. Yeah, Georgia's won 29 straight games. That's true. Not, uh, not too shabby. But their last loss you was You go ahead to, and fade that. Their last loss was to who? The Alabama Crimson. Was Knight. it? I'm pretty sure because they had to get revenge on them in the conference championship game. Uh, You're probably sounds right. right. Sounds yeah. right. Yeah. Um, from the previous year, I think. Uh, whatever it was. Um, look, Georgia. I'm not 100% sure on that. <sighs> Georgia plays well a lot, but did you see the stats? I was rattling it off like pretty mediocre teams, eight point win against six and six Georgia tech. Uh, 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 what a seven point win against six and six Auburn. Oh, no. if, you, if you want that two I just and did. 10 Vanderbilt, they beat by 17. That's not that good. Uh, Hold on. If, if you, if you want, I just uh, pulled these stats. Missouri for, for is the, good, but for the want... database top 25 here. Yeah. Out of the undefeated teams or even, and I'll throw Alabama in here too, but so road wins, the team with the least amount of road wins between any uh, playoff contender, any playoff contender, F Georgia only played four road games all year, right? Yeah. They are nine and zero against power fives, but they're only five and zero against teams that are six and six and better Compare that to Bama. Bama's got a better record on the road. Uh, they are just eight and one though against P fives, but they're six and one against uh, teams six and six or better. So they must play better teams. They have. I think uh, I trust Nick Saban to keep this game close. Although five and a half is not that big of a spread. I don't know. I don't know. I, I guess I'm with you. I guess I'll lean Georgia. Tell me, think, tell me where Bama is better than Georgia. I mean, maybe Milrow, maybe. No, then, I disagree. Yeah, Carson. <laughs> well, I mean, Mil well, I would what? say like, he might be more of a, a, a unknown, like, like Georgia's not used to having to guard a style of quarterback like that. Milrose well, a lot like Lamar Jackson. Yeah. But yeah. not nearly as accurate. <laughs> well, well, statistically yeah. speaking, yeah. The, the Georgia defense is better than the Bama defense. Now, 
you could argue Bama has played a tougher schedule, so maybe those stats are jaded a little bit. But I still think the Georgia defense is a, a, a hair better. Yeah. I think the or, Georgia line's better. I think the Georgia skill position guys are better. Like, who, uh, like I'll take the Bama wideouts over you, Georgia's. Well, if you're including Brock Bowers as a pass catcher, and sure. not a wideout, then I go Georgia. Well, Jermaine Burton started on Georgia for those national championship teams. He starts He's for Alabama solid, now. Yeah. But, I, but I don't think Burton or Isaiah Bond strike fear into defensive coordinators. And I don't think yep. McC uh, McClellan or, or Williams, the two running backs, do either. I think Georgia has a better backfield. And if you include yeah, Bowers yeah, well, as a pass Alabama catcher, run game's been asked. What about Lad yeah. McConks? Is he yeah. uh, striking fear in anyone? I anyone's think you pronounce it McHonky. McHonky, yeah. that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he strikes fear, but he's a very good he's a reliable slot pass. receiver. I think he, who's better, Burton or McConkey? They're totally, totally different. Yeah, it's very tough to compare. Yeah. One's, one's complete possession receiver. Yeah. Other ones. Uh, I, I'm on the dogs. Burton's a bit of a game. I'm breaker. on the dogs. So we're all on the dogs. I think well, I'm on the dogs. I think, I think, you know, Milrose come a long way since the Texas game, but you know, is he ready to put the whole team on his back against Georgia? And I'm going to say no. So yes, I'm on the dogs. Uh, what has Alabama done uh, aside from that Auburn game recently? I got to take a peek at that real quick. Uh, uh, Feather Hat says Bama has the power of the dark side. They are ahead in that department. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Compelling. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, Dick Saban is a uh, Sith Lord. Shout oh, out man. to Tim Green. Says always enjoy the show. Rob Donaldson says Bama convincingly. No. Kirby it, Smart. They're not going to be able to do that cha cha like. Uh, part of Bama's game, and I've enjoyed watching Bama this year, actually, believe it or not. Like I, I thought what they've done with Jameer Gibbs has been, I'm not Jameer Gibbs. Why do I keep saying Jameer Gibbs? Jalen Milrow has been uh very fun to watch. Right. But at the same time, I don't think that shit flies against Kirby smart. I think Kirby smart is going to have a, he's going to have a spy every fucking play. And I think Bama's offensive line, which has been a clear weakness of the team this year gets exposed against Georgia's D line. You know what I predict here? I think neither of these teams is as good as anyone thinks just because they're sec and they're undefeated or one loss. I think when they play in the playoffs, either one of this team might, might get smacked, might, might lose by double digits to whoever they play just because double I'm looking digits. Back I don't know to man. some of Alabama's results. Okay. The, the, the miracle win against a and M. Okay. Three point win against a shitty Arkansas team beating Tennessee by 14, I guess is impressive enough. Same with LSU. But three point win against Auburn, they've had a lot. I mean, even fourteen points against uh, USF. It's like, who is the really great team that they've played? They've only played one all year, Alabama, and they lost by ten at home. Uh, Jenna Watson in the chat says, "This is the same bear, uh, Bama team that barely beat USF." Not Matt really. Austin, yeah, Matt Austin says Georgia has struggled against mobile quarterbacks this year. What? Who is Joe Milton count as a mobile quarterback? Like, yeah, who are and, the mobile quarterbacks? And 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 somebody else just mentioned that Georgia's at, at this point in their program they just get up for the big games no i'm serious though who is the mobile quarterbacks is spencer rattler i wouldn't even he's not a running threat yeah, that's a good point well let, let's he's see. mobile in the pocket no but he's, he's not, not a running no. threat yeah where where uh georgia has been most impressive well at least two of the times i would say their most impressive wins are destroying and this is this kind of lends itself to whoever just made that point was it rob uh Against no, number, Matt, Matt Austin, Matt Austin, yeah. they beat a uh, number twenty Kentucky, uh, Kentucky by uh, thirty eight. Kentucky sucks. Ole Miss by thirty five. Who's number nine? Ole Miss, though, I would say they they kind of they probably run the quarterback more than South Carolina. Yeah, maybe Dart gets around. Yeah, Dart does run. I and don't know how they, you say, Patty, that they could, that either one of these teams is going to lose by double digits to somebody well, else. In the I playoffs. think it, 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 that is an interesting point. See, that Matt see, Austin my, made. My, no, wait, but my problem, Matt, Matt, I appreciate the comment. Missouri's quarterback ran for over a hundred. I don't know if that's true, but if that is, that's not, he's not a running threat though. You don't do a game plan around Brady cook running. You do a game plan around stopping Jalen Milrow running. You guys understand that difference there? Yeah. Oh yeah. Brady, like Brady cook. cook you you're trying to stop yeah. Luther Bird and 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 uh yeah. Sorry, and Theo, but Theo Weiss. Brady yeah. Cook ran for 39 yards against Georgia. Oh. So oh Co Cody there. Schrader ran for over 100 yards, but he's their running back. Yeah, so that's that's not accurate. Okay. And Jenna uh, Watson, yes, women do know sports too. Respect. I see you in the chat every week. We wouldn't say otherwise. There we go. I well, think she, me... I think she deserves some credit for for some comment. I forget which one. <laughs> uh Missouri 
their style is that I mean because Tennessee is a little bit gimmicky, Ole Miss is a little bit gimmicky. I guess you can't say Kentucky is a little bit gimmicky. None of these teams are running quarterbacks. Overrated. Uh, they haven't played. They haven't played any running quarterbacks. Missouri is the only really uh, good team other than Texas. I would say that they played. I mean, I guess you got to give Ole Miss some credit, but they didn't play Texas. Uh oh, Georgia. You're right. Yeah, yeah. they didn't play Texas. Um, uh, Missouri. Yeah, Missouri might be the only like legit, pretty darn good team. Where, where do you put Ole Miss in that? Do you think Ole Miss is a pretty damn good team? They're the same as Missouri. <laughs> yeah. If they play, I'll, I, I'll take I the favor home Missouri. Team. I think. So why I wouldn't if they played in Oxford? Well, okay, but on a, on a neutral, uh, even field, I think Missouri's a, a little bit better than Ole Miss. Maybe, but why, like, I wouldn't lay that much. Why Two one week apart then did Alabama or did Georgia beat uh, Missouri by nine and beat Ole Miss by thirty five? Because at home, uh, I, I I can answer that for you. Missouri plays them every year. Ole Miss, uh, o- Ole Miss, you know that's fair. They got. And and it's like a Ole Miss. Missouri is, played them great two years ago. No, but, last year too. But so, here, here's the thing, though. Ole Miss, though, whenever they play anyone good, they never win because they that cha cha offense, they Jeff beat, Levy shit. They beat uh uh LSU in a I know, shootout. But LSU has now, as you have been the one to alert us to this. They're nine and three. They're a decent LSU, team. LSU though gives up a thousand yards every yeah, game. Yeah. <laughs> so that. I th- that I think uh, Kirby Smart, like we've said, is the type of dude that is going to shut down a, a usually prolific offense. Whereas a team like Missouri is going to play a balanced style of football, and uh, you know that's something that's that much more competitive with so, Georgia. So Rob's saying uh, he's making my argument. I'm uh, making his argument for him because they never play mobile quarterbacks. That doesn't mean they're going to be bad against a mobile quarterback. Yeah, I mean, if anything, I'm thinking Kirby Smart will make that the point of emphasis. Like I, I just trust Kirby Smart when it comes to defense. And I do believe when he was probably, you know, DC, who was the last mobile quarterback that he faced? That's the one you'd have to like running threat quarterback. Someone from mm-hmm. the previous years in the sec, probably um, there's gotta be some off the top of the head. I don't, I can't think did of Hen and hooker run a little bit. We're not going to count Stroud as one or in the national championship. McCarthy. Are, are we no, guess, cause Stroud never ran. Or he didn't even play McCarthy. Are, play are, are we, are we going to actually no TCU's quarterback? I was going to say, are we going to count Max yeah. Duggan? Max Duggan. <laughs> it's pretty bad. They did I mean, he was efficient him. as a runner. He, he wasn't, wasn't as electric he wasn't as Milrow. Milrow. Dude, Milrow true, is true, more, like, still, more like Tebow or more like power running. I understand, but they still had designed runs for him. Yes. Milrow is a completely different animal than Max Duggan. True. He, I agree. He is an absolute nightmare. Okay, and so, how about this? Yeah, but Max Duggan also SEC knows where the line of scrimmage is. game against <laughs> Jaden Daniels last year. Oh, there. That's it. That's and, it right and, there. In that game. Jaden Daniels runs for like 500 yards every week. Well, well Neusmeyer came in that game too because Daniels got hurt, right? That's right. At the time, right. Daniels had six carries for minus six yards. Yeah. Georgia's gonna get. I'm still taking Georgia. I'm, still I'm on Georgia. Georgia. I'm on Georgia too. SMU is heading to Tulane. Tulane's laying four. Why does this never keep on coming down? I even see a three and a half out there too. FYI, doesn't everybody know that Preston Stone is out? When when did he uh, get injured? He's a Last system week. play. Last He's week. a system player, right? Yeah, but I mean. He's the a pretty backup important. has like hardly any experience. I know, and it's in the rain. They're calling for rain. Why? Yeah, why? T- why is this number dropped by two points? I love day? how they're calling for rain. It's so perfect. Uh, Give me a. Who's betting go. on SMU with the backup of quarterback at Tulane? I mean, I think Tulane plays down to their competition, obviously, but uh, they didn't last week. I, I think they're almost. Let's. <laughs> This is, yeah, okay, this is a stretch here. They're gonna punch that ticket. They're the G five version of Georgia, where they're like, you know, they're playing with their food, they're messing around, and then when it mattered, they beat a very good UTA UTSA team, pretty good. And Memphis, they did the same with Memphis too. The two I ones wa- they needed to. I and wanted they- to be on SMU in this game, but without the quarterback, and this line is now only at three and a half. I'm seeing. Yeah, I think you have to be on two late yeah. at home. I see three more three and a halfs out there than fours actually. That uh, that old miss score wildly misleading. Yeah, they know. didn't have Pratt they, either. They probably should have won that game even without Pratt. Yeah. Um, now, two, uh, yeah, I, I, I got to be take Colby to task here because I'm going to back up SMU a little bit because they're going to be in the ACC next year, and you know I'm, <laughs> I'm the ACC <laughs> homer, you know. And Colby said all along, who is SMU beat? SMU has only beat one team over 500. Hold on, and check that out was the, Memphis. Check out these stats. Check out these stats right now. I got them right here. Right, I've all the teams in the in the database top twenty five right here, SMU. Four and two on the road this year, right? Zero and two against power fives, 
one FCS opponent, SMU two, just two and one against teams six and six or better. That doesn't even include TCU, who they lost to. Who were well, you know seven. what? Tulane only had also one win over a team that over five hundred until they beat UTSA, which was no, the second no, no, one. no, 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 no. Tulane is four and one against teams six or six and six or better. I said over five hundred. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, I'm including uh, six and six is better than a losing record, which are you, SMU did was playing teams with losing well, records. Guess, when you're talking about SMU, are you talking about are you including six and six? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there you go, five hundred or better. Okay. Well, uh, I mean, look, but SMU they were they they were down three to Oklahoma in the fourth quarter. True. Okay. So that's kind of like Tulane's loss to Ole Miss. They got slapped by the only two Power Five teams they played. Slapped. In they were they were down three to Oklahoma in the fourth quarter. Okay, and, and also giving, a late yeah. touchdown by TCU made that score appear worse than it was. Also, so SMU has okay. been pretty damn good this season. They have, they've had the easiest fucking schedule in college football. They have had a very easy. I can't. I yeah. can't argue that. True. I'm talking all 133 teams. SMU's had the easiest schedule. It's They're it's up, up there. there. But yeah. with all that said, I can't take their backup quarterback on the road. Only getting three in the rain half. too. Yeah. It's supposed to rain all day. Team, Michael pass, Pratt. Yeah. So I, I'm just wondering why this line keeps on dropping. A good defensive Michael uh, team um, for Tulane. Preston Stone, 20th in the nation in passing yards, 10th in yards per attempt, 9th in adjusted passing yards per attempt, and 11th in the nation in touchdown passes. That's a pretty big piece to lose uh, for that offense. I have to agree with you, and I think it may, the line stinks, but you guys feel like you want to dive into that, right? You smell to, it. You to said, answer Matthew Olson's question, how good is SM, SMU's backup? Nobody knows. It's his second well, in the program. He's well, played limited snaps in blowouts. I mean, hang on, hang on. They have Kevin Jennings. Yeah. Right. But they also don't forget they have the Iowa transfer, Alex Padilla. <laughs> it's well, going to be. If, if they be put a in Padilla, kid. then I like Tulane that much better. <laughs> yeah. You have to lean Tulane here. All right, the game's well, in New Orleans. We're all saying that. Why does the number keep dropping? Who's putting money on SMU? The the SMU alums that are rich as fuck. <laughs> yeah, you, are you kidding me? That's an easy line move right oh, there. They got was, one phone you know call what? from some oil guys like, put ten million on fucking on the on the Mustangs, baby. Woo! Welcome to the off, as welcome. he shoots off guns into the air. <laughs> welcome to the ACC. It's gonna be a perfect cultural fit. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Next up, at that same very time, Sun Belt Championship at Troy, Alabama. App State is catching six on the road at Troy. Man, a lot of points. This game's fun, but I'm all. Uh, this is an interesting one. They're calling for rain in this one too. But um, so it's interesting because Troy lost to App State last year. Right, Troy lost to App State last year, and they lost with College Game Day there on a hail mary. Mm -hmm, that's true. From a motivational side, they probably have been like, "Man, fuck App State," but at the same time, App State is red fucking hot. Now, App State's like Arizona of the Group of Five right now. Five in a row. They're playing good football. They did they, lose to ODU and Coastal earlier in the year. That what, and that's what that's what spurred their five game winning streak. And at that point, Sean Clark looked like he was going to get shit canned in year three. But yeah, he now, now he might get the Duke job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know who's on a nine game winning streak? Yeah, Detroit Trojans. Detroit's yeah, Trojan good. man. I'm still taking the points. I think this is like a close game. I actually think App is probably the better team on a neutral site at Troy, though. I could see Troy winning by a field goal. Uh, give me uh give me give me the Mountaineers. Ride that money line. Let's go. Patty C, what are you doing here? Uh look, we're agreeing a lot. I think uh, App State is playing such good football. Uh that you have to uh have to take them. Troy's last loss, by the way, um, James Madison University in Troy, Alabama. Uh let's be honest here. Let's bring <laughs> this up. Uh JMU belongs in this championship game, and this this is a sham of a championship game. Okay, that's true. Just like Mountain West, Mountain West. Either way, I, I'm a little scared that App is going to be a public dog here, and I, you know, Kamani Vidal, Troy's uh, running back, is Kamani Vidal Sassoon. Mm. All right, God <laughs> damn it, my, my you guys fuck this up every week. <laughs> well, I'm going to have to say Mick Honky. Okay, <laughs> uh, uh, he's a top ten rusher in the nation, and six year senior quarterback Gunnar Watson is 
probably playing the best football in his life. It's a long road trip. You're like, you know, I'm going App State. You know, I mean, just my personal bias, I have to go App State here, but I'm a little bit worried they're, they're kind of a public dog now. Well, you got to ride App State here. Okay, folks, before we get to the next one, I want to tell you that the college football experience is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy has a way to play alongside your favorite fantasy players all season long. They got NFL, they got NBA, they got NHL, they got college basketball, and you better believe they got college football. Simply pick higher or lower on your favorite players' fantasy stats and cash in. I'm looking right now, guys. Patty C, higher or lower? Bo Nix, 11 and a half rushing yards against Washington. The highest one on the line over higher, higher uh, NC Nick. How about this one here? I'll take you to your little uh, pissing Pavia. All right. Oh, how about this higher or lower 36 and a half rushing yards for Diego pissing Pavia. Uh, you know, 36 and a half. I do. I'm over all day. There's only yeah. been three games all year when he, when he's ran for less than that. In the first matchup against Liberty, he ran for 63. That seems like it's taking candy from a baby. Let me ask you this. Do you like Caden Salter over 47 and a half rushing yards? New Mexico State, like I said, they're pretty good against the run. Let me go under on that. I I, I don't want to be that guy just throwing out all over or all hires. Let let me go lower. What do you think of Patty C's play of uh, Bo Nix? Higher or lower, 11 and a half rushing yards. 11 and a half is almost ridiculous. That could be one run. So I'm going to go uh, higher on that as well. All right. So how much money should I throw on this? Oh, shit. Uh, a lot. 250? I can do that right now because they give me credits. <laughs> uh, let's go. Uh, no, but I'm going to go. Let's put 50. So just Pavia and Nix, or should I go on the Salter one? I feel more comfortable about Pavia and Nix. Should we add, let's add a third one though? Let's let's make it well. Like right said, now, all I'm making is 150 if it New hits. New Mexico State sh- bottling up Auburn's defense like they did in the rushing game uh, or me, Auburn's offense scares you about Salter. Tell me what, what should, you have with Penix passing. Michael Penix, uh, higher or lower, 300 and a half. Man, how do you do the first outing? Do we have the that? First outing, he threw for 302. I'm gonna, say <laughs> under. I'm gonna say under, but it's I, I was hoping for like 330 or something. Look, what? he only threw he only threw, he threw for 204 last week, only 162 at Oregon State the week before that. Yeah. What about just, this? These two teams Look. know each other well. I don't think this game is gonna be a quite as crazy high scoring as some people expect. What about Quinn Ewers? Higher or lower 265 and a half passing yards. I kind of like the lower. Five. That seems like it's kind of high oh, for oh, Ewers. I'm gonna go lower. Should we add that to the mix or is there, do you like potentially Olive Garden over uh, 103 and a half rushing yards? That's dangerous. I actually think the under Oklahoma State giving up 251 passing yards per game. Good for 113th in the nation. Viewers might have a, uh, a nice day against them, but what the, the, over, the number is what? 250, 265, 265. And a half. That's asking a lot. I think Should you're we right. ride the lower on that. I think you're working. Let's you're, go under. Yeah, that's the play. Folks, so we're going to put 50 smackaroos here. We hit for 300. Boom. Boom. Let's go. If you win that, then you put 250 down on the next bet. You're damn right. You're damn right I do. Uh, (laughs) Look, folks, uh, that's what's so great about Underdog Fantasy. So what are you doing? Watch along, make picks, and make some extra cash, right? When you sign up with the promo code TCESGPN, Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. So they're going to give you a free $100, right? And then get this, the promo code TCE SGPN. We're going to do a little sweatshirt giveaway here. It's kind of like a David Stern draft lottery. It's going to be rigged. (laughs) You're going to get a free sweatshirt. So sign up, do a little screenshot of you signing up TCE SGPN. Show us that hit me up on Twitter at the Colby D or uh, at TCE on SGPN. Show us that. And we're going to enter you in that raffle. All right, let's go. We're also brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets. Win bigger by betting smarter this NFL season with Hall of Fame Bets, the sports betting analytics platform. Far parlays, player props, and game lines. Research every NFL, NBA, and soccer bet with historical stats and data. They're going to remind you if you're taking the Indianapolis Colts that Gary Hogaboom once threw a touchdown pass to Bill Brooks. (laughs) All right? 
So what are you doing, folks? Stop betting in the dark and join over 30,000 users researching with Hall of Fame bets to craft more intelligent data-driven parlays. Download the Hall of Fame bets app or visit hofbets.com. Use that promo code SGPN to get 50% off your first month today. Start researching. Start winning with Hall of Fame bets. All right, we are back. I mean, the, the game's getting better and better and better. We're going to Tallahassee, Florida. For the SWAC championship on ESPN two, <laughs> I, was, I was about to say the uh, Florida State game is in Charlotte. <laughs> no, no, no. The best team in Florida after this weekend, record wise, might just be the Florida A and M Rattlers. Willie Simmons, the old Clemson quarterback, doing a damn good job with them. But they are hosting, and they are there. This is a big line. They're getting seven. They're favored by seventeen and a half points against. My boy, Bubba McDowell in Prairie View in the SWAC. Winner goes to the Celebration Bowl to take on Howard. <laughs> Last time Florida AM played, it was October 28th. Florida AM whooped Prairie View 45 to 7. Woo. But since then, Prairie View's been red fucking hot. Give me the points of Bubba McDowell. Look, he is from the great state of Florida. You remember him at Miami. All right. He's not going to go there and get embarrassed in a championship game. In Tallahassee of all places. At Bragg Memorial. Yeah. Tallahassee of all places. Let's go. Give me the points. NC Nick, what are you doing here in the SWAC championship? I think it's crazy to fade FAMU when their only loss of the year was at USF, South Florida, 38 24, in a game they were competing in. I'm all They're over the Rattlers. Yeah, they are points. good. South Florida with a look ahead spot to Bama the following week. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, mm -hmm. South Florida was sleeping on FAMU. So uh, defending your boy Galesh. Uh, but <laughs> even still, Famu yeah. is sitting at 10 and 1. Uh Prairie View sitting at 6 and 5. Their uh power five opponent this year was uh SMU. They lost what 69 nothing. I'm gonna go ahead and lay the points with Famu. Mm, mm. Hello. All right, moving along. Next up, schedule wise. We jump on over to the FBS because we got some fire matchups coming. Five o'clock Pacific Louisville, Florida state in the rain in Charlotte. The only power five that has the cojones to play outdoors. Thank you. ACC Louisville's catching two and a half. Get You're the fuck out of here. Louisville winning this outright. I'm not hedging. I got plus 1200. I'm not hedging. Louisville's the better team. They've been the better team all year. <laughs> How many times I, I, there needs to be a, a, a segment, Nick? First, first, you you took Louisville, right? In you're, this game, yeah. You're leaning. Well, Louisville? I mean, not to show my cards early until I go into the breakdown, but okay, uh, go ahead and go into the breakdown right now because <laughs> no. I, let me tell you in advance, though. Assuming you take Louisville here, this is yet another occasion of you guys fading Florida State and me having to prove. Do you know, you Florida wrong. State only had what 212 yards of offense last week. Look, Colby's sitting there telling me, "Oh, easy play, easy." Uh, is that Cincinnati or is that Florida State? Easy last handicap, week? and then what happens? Florida State comes back and wins. I'm telling him the whole time. Look, Florida State's playing uncharacteristically bad in the first half. What do they do in the second half? They what? Twenty four points in a row. 200, 212 yards of offense. Hey, I don't Eddie, maybe, maybe you're right. Look, they got punched last week the, with the back of quarterback. They could have folded, but they you know they got off the bat. Uh, but yeah, to answer your question, I am on Louisville because Louisville is really good versus run this year. And if Florida State can't run, then I'm worried because even like Kentucky, Kentucky's basically a one dimensional team. Also, they can only run the ball and Louisville held them to just 83 yards rushing. Mm. The big question mark is turnovers. And that's what kind of killed Louisville That's what killed Louisville all year. Jack Plummer throws way too many interceptions. And, and that, no, that's and that the way Florida last State, week. Yeah. Well, well, and, and the interceptions. I mean, Jack Plummer has 11 yeah. interceptions in 12 games. Only four power five quarterbacks have more, have thrown more interceptions than Jack Plummer. If you guys want to get trivia, do you know, name one other P five quarterback. There's four of them who've thrown more interceptions than Jack Plummer. Name one of them. Mm. Ooh. If you need a hint, I can, I can Did drop there. a conference. No. Yeah, give me yeah, a, give me the conference first. Actually, three of them are ACC, one's Big Twelve. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, my first thought is Van Dyke, but uh um, yes, yes, yes. Oh, there we go. There's one of them. Uh, Calandria. No, <laughs> even though he, he only played half the games. Yeah, that's probably why. 
he was on pace. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's got to be the fucking A and M transfer for Georgia Tech. Haynes King, yes. Yeah, he, I feel like he's a he's a walking turnover. How about this though? Patty C wants to keep doing this. Jeff Brown, nineteen and eight in his last twenty seven games as a dog. Woo! All I'm saying is, man, control the turnovers, stop the run. I think Louisville can win, and that's ATS. I, Look, I want to see Louisville next wins, year. Yeah. Who is Louisville going to go after in the portal to get a quarterback? Because because Louisville with a better quarterback this year, Colby's still trying to love on Jack Plummer, but I'm not a fan. But Louisville with a better quarterback this year would have been really good. I think he I landed think a, a big recruit. I think he landed a big recruit that was sitting out this year. Yeah, Patty, yes, he's decent, but for every good throw, there's a bad throw. Like, what the hell are you doing? How did they lose that game last week? They the fumble, his fumble. Jack Plummer's running out of bounds. The kick return hurt them. Yeah, but Jack Plummer's running out of bounds, and he just he thinks the play's over. Yeah, and he kind of just gives up, and the guy just comes by and pops it right out of his fucking hand. It's, it was terrible. But I also, Jawar this- Jordan had a big fumble too. Well, yeah. Again, they lost the turnover battle three to one. That's how they lost. Yeah, I don't know. This game's kind of tough because without uh, with, with Rotomaker in there instead of Travis, it's very hard to ca- handicap Florida State. I just think with a national or a, a playoff on the line, a team as talented as Florida State. But that's why Brahm is perfect. Win the ACC in your first year at Louisville. The town's they're way burn better. Down. They're way better than I thought they would be. They're way better than I thought they would be. Uh, they could win this game. Still two and a half. I'm going to take Florida State, but I feel okay about it, but not great. All right. Same time. We got a classic, but the Big Ten. They fail at every stop, whether it's the whole Harbaugh thing, whether it's, hey, we're only going to play a six game season because of COVID, or we're not going to play the season because of COVID. You know what I mean? Uh, they, they just failed. They're fucking losers. All right. There's no way to put it. The big, like, other way to put it, like Tony Petiti, Kevin Warren, they all suck. They're terrible. Michigan, Iowa should be. It at should Soldier be at Soldier Field or, yeah. or, or, or Lambeau. Lambeau. Yeah. They got access to these great stadiums and they shit the bed every year. Uh, Michigan's laying 22 points against fucking Deacon Hill. Let me tell you something. Deacon Hill's a dog winner. All right. <laughs> I'm on the Iowa Hawkeyes plus the points. Let's go. Uh, I, I think the better play here is under 35 and a half. <laughs> Cause I see this being 32 to two. <laughs> no, I see this being Iowa wins 17 to 16. You see that, that happening. I don't buy So. <laughs> Kirk Ferentz is the best coach of football, baby. Let's go. I hate to say, it, but I think Colby and I have agreed with every FBS game so far. Here's where we're different. I'm all over Michigan here. I mean, go back two years ago, they beat Iowa in the Big Ten championship game, 42 to three. Last year's game against Purdue was a little bit closer, but Michigan still put up 43. It was 43 22. That's because Purdue could actually put up some points. And, and Aiden O'Connell, who's starting for the Raiders, actually threw for over 300. Iowa it's can't do that. It's such bullshit because. They, they just shit on the Big Ten West. They become like a pun. If they play this game outdoors, I, the, I really believe. But we're breaking down teams. this game. I know, that, but that look, doesn't matter. But it's Brian Ferentz's final game as OC. <laughs> they, Deacon Hill throws for a buck seventy-five <laughs> and it goes off. Yeah, it goes off. <laughs> Iowa covers. Let's go, Hawkeyes. We, we got back-to-back years. Michigan scoring in the forties in the Big Ten championship game, and I was silly to fade them last week. I, I own it because all year long I was saying this is Harbaugh's best squad at Michigan, so I don't see why they're pretty damn close to forty again. And I was not coming anywhere near there. Here's this where we're job. going to differ. This coaching job by Ference. So let me get this straight. Your starting quarterback out for the year. Luke Lachey, your best player probably on the whole team, out for the year. Eric All, maybe your second best player, out for the year. Cooper Dijon, out for the year. And they just keep winning ball games. When are they going to get the respect? Phenomenal coaching job, but let's be honest. Iowa schedule Charmin fucking soft. Really? Yeah. You really what you want to come uh, it's funny you mentioned that. They're one they're one it's game funny you mentioned that. Check us against out. a ranked team. They <laughs> lost thirty one nothing. Okay. Well the rankings are a sham. Let's let's <laughs> let's look at this. Let's look at this. Let's compare it to do you think uh you think Ole Miss is better than Iowa, Patty C? Uh no. Um maybe. You, Missouri? You think Missouri is? I think Missouri is. How about this? Be, I don't know. How about this? Probably. I was Probably. I was four and one on the road. Missouri's three and one on the road. I was eight and two against their, so they have eight wins against P fives. Missouri only has seven. How about this? Iowa didn't play an FCS. Missouri did. 
How about this? Missouri's four and two against teams that are six and six or better. Iowa five and two. Fuck you. Neutral field. I'm taking Missouri over Iowa. No, who who are the teams? No, no, no. I'm taking Iowa. Uh, Good luck with Brady Cook throwing against that defense. Who did Missouri lose to? They (laughs) lost to uh, five pick sixes here. Missouri Uh, lost to LSU LSU. and Georgia. Yeah, and they should have beaten LSU. But they also should have lost to uh, Kansas State, Middle Tennessee, Uh, Uh, Florida. Florida Florida, Florida had a lead with fucking. Florida had a lead with like 20 seconds left. You see that catch? To get them that first down, Iowa yeah. should have lost to Nebraska. If Nebraska, they should have beat Minnesota. Damn that's it, that's true. Uh, right? <laughs> I would lean Missouri over Iowa. I I would say I might even lean Ole Miss slightly over. I don't know if well, I a lot of people that. thought Kentucky was better than Iowa too. What happened? What happened last year? When, when Maybe Missouri. one of these teams will play in a bowl game and we can break that down. But it won't really yeah. matter because half the team will be gone, half the coaching <laughs> staff will be gone. So it doesn't really. Welcome to college football in 2023 in the FBS. That's right. Got to protect the bowls. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to lean Michigan 21 and a half. The hook does scare me a little bit. You guys going to lose. Take the under. Uh, all right, let's jump back to the FCS. Two games left. Delaware announced they're going to the FBS. We had enough of you FCS. We dominate you. Well, now they got to head cross country to Missoula, Montana at night in the Ooh. snow. How cold is it going to be at night in Montana? Jeez. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Good Lord. Uh, they are catching. Is this the last game? I haven't done a shotgun here. And there. No, we have two. Okay. We are catching 18 points. Delaware blue hens are actually, I've seen 21 actually right now. 21, 21 points. Oh man. See the thing is the snow slows down the game. So I, I actually think you take the points. You know, but this game's awesome. This game Del- is fucking awesome. Delaware has been faltering down the stretch here, losing two of their last three regular season games and, and, and four different QBs have taken snaps this year. And they, but, they, they, they that comeback last, I mean, Lafayette was whooping their ass and they battled and all the way back and won. You know who came back was, it was led by quarterback, Nick Minicucci uh-huh. as a fellow Nick, I'm I was, it could be kind of hard to fade a Nick and a, or a Minicucci. <laughs> I'm, t- I'm gonna take the points. Yeah, take the points. Patty, see what are you doing here at Washington Grizzly Stadium there in Missoula? You have to figure Montana sees yet another CAA team. Skipping town going up to the FBS. They're gonna be uh they're gonna be a little mad about that points you made about Delaware kind of sucking here down is the stretch. Is that an angle? Yeah, is that an angle for Montana? Do they really want to rub it in? I mean, it, it's might. not like this is Delaware's potential last game. They're going to be in the FCS last year too. So, or, or next year. Or next too, year. So. Yeah. But they're Maybe not going to be matter. eligible for the playoffs. That stupid rule. No. You know what? Um, yeah. This is a, a CAA to FBS. Who are you shot, taking first? Shotgun. I'm taking Montana, but this is for Delaware. <laughs> okay. This I'm is confused. for Delaware <laughs> in the points or is this, he's taking Montana. He said, so I'm taking Montana in the points, but. I'm, uh, <laughs> Don't barf. Uh, look, Delaware, congratulations. You are a great addition to the FBS. <laughs> All right, final game on the slate Southern Illinois, the Salukis. Stone Labano had said, Don't let the dogs get hot. Well, they're getting hot at the right time as they beat the shit out of Nichols. Now they head <laughs> all the way to Moscow, Idaho to take on the Vandals. This is at that ridiculous Kibby Dome. You're right next to Martin Stadium. You're like three miles away. Play this in Pullman. Uh, Idaho's laying five and a half. I think the Salukis are live to win this thing. I think they're going into this little cha 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 dome. <laughs> Kibby Dome gets a lot of love. Yeah, they're too not a much. Fan. It fucking sucks. Uh, no. Give me, give me the Salukis to win outright. Nick, if you look at Idaho, I mean. Their three losses on this year. They lost 31 17 at Cal, a two point loss to Montana, and a two point loss at Weber State. Weber State. Whatever. Weber State. <laughs> Told I, was, me I was getting that wrong. Chris Weber State. Someone's pronunciation. Sorry, Chris Weber State. <laughs> Chris Weber State. Uh, they're pretty damn good, but I, I, if, if you're going to give me more than a field goal, I'm going to take it. Give me the Salukis. Patty C. Uh, who is um, Idaho's football coach? It seems like that program is on the rise. Do you, right know, do you know what they did? What'd they do? They went out and they hired uh, a North Dakota. I believe he came over from North Dakota state. Uh, 
what is it? Brent vegan. I think it is. Oh man. I, I'm not sure if I oh, can wait. get behind a vegan. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I'm sorry. Jason Eck, Jason Eck, Brent, okay. Brent vegan is uh Montana States. Montana States is a vegan, Nick. Oh man. Uh, Damn it. Let's go. Uh, Jason, <laughs> Eck. Jason Eck. A vegan in Montana. There's no way at all. Yeah. Yeah. He wouldn't yeah. survive. <laughs> uh, look, Southern Illinois against uh, playoff caliber teams. I guess you could say the seven point loss against South Dakota state was pretty damn impressive. But other than that, uh, they've taken some L's. I'm going to lean Idaho, especially I guess in the Kibbe dome, you're going up to Moscow in the winter. You're taking an L even in a dome. Patty C always thought Gorbachev could have been a great quarterback <laughs> folks. Uh, this is our show. This is the college football experience. Give us a follow on Twitter at TCE on SGPN. Patty C is on Twitter at Patty C831. I'm on Twitter at the Colby D. We'll be breaking down. So 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern, pregame show covering the FCS, covering the FBS, covering the college basketball slate. It's a fucking fantastic weekend. When you mix both, it's just going to be fire. It's going to be absolute fire. Beautiful. Um, Give us a follow on Twitter or subscribe. I mean, subscription service on Twitter. Um, uh, Twitter, I can't fucking talk. YouTube, uh, sports gambling. Uh, God X. damn it! Yeah, the the college is like, YouTube.com slash the college experience. I can't fucking talk. I've been doing damn podcasts since fucking nine in the morning. All right, YouTube.com slash the college experience. Subscribe. Tell another friend all that good shit. Get on over to iTunes. Give us a five star review, please. That always helps. And I'll be back in a couple hours talking college basketball. All right. So check it all out. Check out the sports gambling podcast live from Vegas every Friday on VEASAN. Until next time, folks, this is the college football experience. You better start thinking about yours and we out of here. Run.